some scientists in America have now actually developed a beating orgasm from stem cells. What? A beating, um, a organism. beating orgasm. Stimulating late night sporting debate for long distance lorry drivers. <laughs> young mums. What time do you call this? Coming on? And students who've taken too many of those caffeine tablets. <laughs> The two mics, Harry and Graham on Talk Sport. This is Talk Sport. Uh, we are the two mics, and I'm delighted to say it's time to say a very good morning to Mr. Mike, a Porky, a Parry. Very good morning to you, Mr. Parry. And a very good morning to you, Mike. What are you doing with your microphone? I don't know. It's, Try not uh, to like just stroke it like that, because if you stroke it like well, that, it makes an awful lot of noise. You know, we have um, <laughs> people who are supposed to set stuck? these microphones up, but uh, it's all bent, and I don't know. I don't know. Oh, okay. Well, we'll try and fix it. It looks like it's sounding all right, which is the main thing. Okay, well, as long as it sounds all right, yeah. that's what we'll the. Fix uh, it. We'll fix it in the next. That's uh, what the listener really cares about. Yeah. You've made a very important point now, you know. Yes. Very important point. Thank that you. little sort of joke that you started the whole uh, opener to the show yeah. with is very important. It is important. Let me put this question to Go you, on. right? Yeah. Do people admire Italy, A, for the beautiful landscape on the Italian... Um, very nice, the Riviera. Uh, yes. Absolutely, thank you very much indeed. Yeah. That place where all the famous people get married. Yes, or Lake Como. Lake Como. Yeah. No, not Lake Como. No, the, you know, the, the Malfi Coast. Oh, the Amalfi Coast. The Amalfi yeah. Coast. Ischia. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, Capri. That's right. So, yeah. so do people admire Italy for that? Do people admire Italy for um, the quality of their mm. politicians and the way yes. they run their political system, mm. or do people admire Italy for their football team? I think at the moment you'd have to say their football team and their fantastic manager. Exactly. Yeah. And if you had a second choice, it would be the scenery in the Malfi Coast. Very true. And the third thing would yeah. be Italian politicians, because yeah. they're all rubbish. Mr Berlusconi, you'd have to say, well, is not one of the greatest politicians no, of all time. No, no. The, the Italian political system is a basket case, right? Yeah. Well, now, you see, I don't think we can say that anymore, given yeah. what's going on in well, this country. Well, I'm about to say to you, I'm about to say to you, you know, it's about Case in Greece, right? We all admire the fact that the Greeks were so stoic during the Second World War. We yeah. admire the fact that they um, produce uh, things like olives and all that kind kebabs, of stuff. We like their kebabs, kebabs and all yeah. that kind of stuff. Yeah. But their political situation is a basket case, it right? It is. Yeah. The Germans, we admire their Mercedes cars. Yeah. I actually drive one, despite the fact it's currently got a dodgy computer. It does seem to. But have, I, yeah. I admire German cars. Yeah. But their political system, I don't really know anything about it. Well, Angela Merkel has been single-handedly responsible absolutely. for wrecking Europe. You'd have to say absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Angela Merkel. She's the only German politician I know, okay? okay. Yeah, right. And as for the French, mm. well, the French produce beautiful cheeses. Very lovely cheeses. They've got yes. lovely countryside. Saucisson. They're very beautiful women. Yeah. Uh, as beautiful for, women. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. As, for the, as for their political Was system... Was Emmanuel from France? Oh, Emmanuel... <laughs> I'm not sure she was. <laughs> Sylvia Christel. No, she was, yeah. Was Manuel. She French? Yeah, well, was, the Sylvia, film. was Sylvia Christel French? Yes, of course she was. It's sure? based in France, you oaf. Right. Um and we you know, admire lots of things about France. Yes. But we don't admire their politicians, because right. France is a basket it's case. Not banging right? the desk, though, because every time you bang uh, yeah, the desk yeah, it makes yeah. a terrible noise. So that brings me to the question yeah, of on. the moment. Yes. Of the sixty five million people in this country. Yeah. How many of them are bothered, A, about the structure of the political system, or B, the structure mm. of the national football well, team? funnily enough... I would say mm. almost 95% of them would say, I really care more about getting the football right no, than the politics. I think you'd be wrong with that. No, wrong no, no, about that. no, I'm I think, right. I think, I'm right. A, I think it's a 50-50 split. No, it's not I a 50-50 think, split. Because no, I think there are certain people who watched yesterday's uh, shenanigans, again, with Jeremy Corbyn, yes. uh, to say, well, what on yes. earth is going on? Would you stop wrestling with the microphone? Well, uh, you know, when somebody fixes it and makes it right, <laughs> we'll be all right. Yeah, well, I told on. you we'll fix it in a minute. Yeah. The point about Jeremy Corbyn is, is that, mm. you know, no doubt he thinks that he's there for the long sh- uh, long term. No doubt he thinks that he was elected by, you know, 250,000 Labour voters, yes. right? But the fact that, as you've mentioned before, mm. and I think you've said this on other programmes, yes. um, you know, something like 70% uh, and plus more than that yeah. of his own MPs yeah. have no confidence in no, it, right? The all. Tory party is full of people who want yeah. to run for the uh, head of the Tory party. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, David Cameron is resigning. Sure. Nobody knows what's going on. Nicola Sturgeon goes to uh, uh, Brussels yesterday. Yes. To be told that actually we can't negotiate with you because yeah. we'd only do it with the UK. And a lot of people do care about that. Oh, a yeah. lot of people do give a monkeys about whether we're in Europe or not. When she was in Brussels, apparently, you know, they all came up to her in the European Commission mm. and said, uh, Madame, you are known as we Bernie. Why is this? <laughs> <laughs> Which, of course, no, actually, that's not true. The ultimate, no, but the <laughs> yeah. ultimate insult for any woman going to yeah. uh, for France mm. is to be called Madame. Oh, is you it? You know that, don't you? No, I didn't know that. Because Mademoiselle, it, is it? Yeah. Well, you see, the thing is, there's a certain point at which you stop yeah. calling them Mademoiselle yeah. and you start calling them Madame. OK. And, and never 
never mind OK yes. and move on, right? No, this no. is a very important point. Oh, right, OK. Yeah, because yeah. women are very, very conscious of their age, right? Aye. Aye. Now, mm. if you call somebody madame, yes. that means you've gone beyond mademoiselle. Oh, I see. You are no longer considered to be a young woman. All right, OK. So if they were calling her madame, yeah. and I know Nicholas Surgeon quite well, I don't think she'd be happy. Right. No, I don't think she'd like that. No longer sort of rated as sexy yeah. or available. Right, exactly. Something like that. So yeah, the main, so the, and then, so the main point about the football yeah, yeah. is that, yes, of course people mm. care about who's mm. going to be in charge, but my worry is nobody wants the job. No, Three no. and a half million a year. Totally agree. Right, work for four months. Nobody wants it. Totally agree. Gareth Southgate, the biggest sort of boring plonker of football management, Bit currently harsh. on these aisles, Bit harsh. is turning it down. Why? Well, well, well look, look. Let's. Uh, I just want to round the subject off about the polish. You're right. Old Hollander, yeah. he liked a bit of madam as well, doesn't he? he still does. does. You know Francoise, what I mean? Yeah. yeah it's, you know, driving around on his scooter in the middle of the night, looking for a leg overy. <laughs> you know, le leg over. Le leg over. And uh, <laughs> he, he probably goes to the commissioner of the uh, of the Paris. Uh, police and says, Commissioner, get me two outriders. Right. I'm out of my bike tonight there looking a, for the Lego Ver. There may be a bum. And he, <laughs> I need the outriders yeah. to protect yes. me when I'm in Rogerization mode, you know? R- Roger. Yeah, Roger. But what I would say is this, look... Most politicians are self-serving, self-indulgent, talentless bunch of chancers who, as a group of people, have a reputation for thievery, dishonesty and general, all-round, not-nice ability, no, OK? Indeed. yes, absolutely. So I would say, compared to that group of, you know, people who are mostly, or some of them, some of them are just basic scumbags, right? Yes. I would say, compared to that group, Roy Hodgson is a very decent honorab- and honourable man. I don't man. care. I don't care how decent he is. Yeah. I don't care how Honourable he is. I'm comparing football to politicians. What I'm saying yeah. is football is a much, much, much more noble profession and has much more to hold its head up about in its mm. contribution I to society agree. in this country no, than politics, no. which is a scumbag-infested mm. um, dung heap, in Den my view. Yes. Yeah, no, yeah. Football is the same. You know, Roy no, it's Hodgson. Not. No, it's Roy not. Hodgson. No, you can't say that. Roy Hodgson, I will ask you one question, right? Yes. Has Roy Hodgson ever told the truth at a press conference? Um, well, he's never told a lie, put it that way. Uh, well, you are a very uh, capable and uh, uh, yes. uh, experienced PR man for the FA. Let yes. me ask you the question again. Yes. Has Roy Hodgson ever told the truth at a press conference? Well, he's never told a lie. That's not the same answer I'm looking for. Well, I, I can't answer the question you've just put to me because I don't have intimate knowledge of the inside of Roy Hodgson's mm, head, so right. I can't answer that question, OK? okay? Well, let me but put I know this he's you. an honourable man who does not intentionally lie. Uh, well, let okay? me put this to you. The, yeah. the, the whole business of football in this country yeah. has become... Uh, a, a, a similar debt of mm. iniquity. People do not tell the truth. Footballers, ex-footballers, many of whom uh, you know appear yeah. here on Talk Sport, yes. do not reveal what actually really goes on Is that inside right? the dressing room. Having to go now at some of our pundits. I am, you? yeah. Some of them do not reveal what you, they know you, about you, the game. You, you've got they protect you, each other. You've got a limited life you. around here, mate. I'm yeah, well, I'm telling you, you well, yeah. because I'm the secret but truth. The management justice. aren't listening. Yeah, well, the management mm. will be listening, mm. and they will like listening to this because what I want to do is point out that people do not tell the truth. Yes, they do not take the opportunity to actually reveal all. And mm. what they do is to try and conceal everything. Yeah. I mean, do you really believe that Wayne Rooney, uh, when he says there was no, di- uh, you know, sort of uh, uh, problem, there was no player revolt, do you think that's right? Do you think people like uh, 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 Jamie Vardy and, and Jack Wiltshire were sitting on the bench not dissing Roy Hodgson for not making them play? Do you think Roy Hodgson, yeah. when he appeared mm. uh, yesterday reluctantly in front of the press and said, you know, I'm feeling very fragile yes. and, you know, uh, it's been a very difficult time for me? Yes. I don't think he's telling the truth. But you're, you're spinning away from my... The kernel of my point, which is that the world looks upon countries sometimes because of the magnificence of their football and their football team, like Italy, yeah. and couldn't care less about their politics, you know, and we should feel the same, really. Politics is an incidental matter. I mean, as John Lennon once said... Yeah. Uh, life is what happens when you're busy doing other things. Yeah. That is what's happening in Britain at the moment. Yeah. Everybody's getting on with their lives, right? right. Well, did but, you notice that the but in the house came of, back? Yeah, exactly. Did you notice that the FT exactly. uh, 100 came exactly. back? Exactly, but in the Commons, where chaos absolutely reigns, I mean, it's astonishing to find that we've got a Prime Minister now who's on his way out, but who is mocking the bloke who's sitting opposite him, who's the leader of the opposition, yeah. for not having the control of his party and, and having people rebel on him. Mm. I mean, it's absolutely But how ridiculous is it for a guy who's mm. already said he's leaving to yeah. be demanding the other guy leaves. Oh, yes, absolutely. You know. Yeah, absolutely. Now, let me ask you about this. I've okay. sent this picture. What does this picture show? Could you please describe it to the audience? Uh, well, it's me yeah. giving a big thumbs up there. Yes, who's in the middle? Looks like... Well, I'm trying to work that out. Hang Who on. is that? that? That looks like the heyday of my uh, career as a senior... Uh, representative mm. of the Daily Express in Fleetwood. I think the man on the right is Richard Littlejohn. No. Isn't it? I think it might be, actually. Yeah. yeah he looks yeah. very young. Yeah. Who's the guy in the middle? In the middle. 
He's only got one it's eye. It's a bit like Razor Ruddock, doesn't it? Who is he? I don't know. Why well, he's only got no, one eye? Somebody has posted this picture on Twitter. Oh. And he hasn't only got one eye, he's just got one eye sort of partially closed. Oh, is he? I was hoping you'd be able to help me here. I, I don't, you know, can you give me? I'll have yeah, a study right. of it. It's, uh, just to explain to our listeners, there's... Your, very, your, your hair is uh, very, uh, very red. Yeah, very red. So it must be a while Beard's ago. very red, looks very long. Uh, that is little John, without a shadow of a doubt. Yeah, I think you might be right. Some moment, but I don't know the guy in the middle. He's a very tall guy. Do yeah. you know what he looks like? He looks like David Gill. Yeah. Uh, except it's not David Gill, because this man's clearly intoxicated. I wonder if it was Razor Ruddock. No, it's not Razor. No, I don't know who that is, to be honest, but it doesn't matter anyway. It shows me as, you know, you can you can tell that my authority is, is absolute there, and... Uh, if that's um, <laughs> if that's Richard Little John, why's he got a ring in his nose? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, maybe you were leading him around. Now yeah. uh, we've got loads to do. We're going to talk to Warren Barton a little bit later on. We're yeah. going to talk dinosaurs as yeah. well. It is, of course, Porky Vision. Uh, we are the two mics to talk. It's a wonderful night. Gotta take it from me. It's a wonderful night. Come on and break it on down. It's a wonderful night. Gotta shake it from me. It's a wonderful night. Come on. This is Talk Sport. We are the two mics. There will be a yep. podcast coming out a little bit later on. Angelo yep. says this. How about this, right? Angelo. I'm li- Angelo, I'm listening to you. That was I'm... a famous song by who? Why, I don't know. Angelo. I have no idea. Up in the hills there in Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> do you remember it? No, I don't. It was by, uh, it was by the group that won the uh, Eurovision Song Contest. Really? You know, running away together. Yeah, it's about no. a, yeah the song's about well, a, a British couple. band or a foreign? Yeah, yeah. Running away together, no. hiding from every stranger, Angelo. <laughs> How do you know all this stuff? <laughs> I remember it. Sake. And it was it was like, you know, the, you know, uh, making your mind up and all yeah, that. Yeah. Who was that? Well, it was Bucks Fizz. Yeah, I think it was them. I think no. it was them. It was, no. either, it was either them or the other group that uh, that won it. Are you thinking of Brotherhood of Man? Yeah, Brotherhood of Man. I think it was Brotherhood of Man. Oh, yeah. dear God. Yeah. Angelo. Please cleanse my ears from that rubbish. Now, yeah. anyway, can we tell you what Angelo says? Yeah. I'm listening to you from the beautiful Isle of Ischia. Ooh, gorgeous, lovely. gorgeous place. you ever been to Ischia? No. You know, it's where... Do you remember the talented Mr Ripley? Yes. Have you seen that? No. <laughs> What's your problem? Why I've heard you, of it. I've heard why of have it. you not seen it? Well, who wrote it? Never mind who wrote it. Jude I, Law was in it, right? Who? Jude, Jude Law. Jude Law. And mm. the guy from... Um, uh, was it about Oxford University? No. Oh, I thought it was. No, it was not. Okay. The guy who died of heroin overdoses in it. H- who? Seymour Hoffman. Oh, yeah, right? him. Yeah, Remember yeah, him? okay. Yeah, yeah. And also, him. also, yeah. the guy from The Bourne Identity. What's his name? Uh, yeah, Jason. Jason. Vaughan. Uh, yeah, but what's his real name? Uh, what's Matt, real Matt name? Damon. Matt Damon, he's yes. in it, right? Yeah. And a lot of it was filmed in Ischia. Ischia. And Ischia. Is that an it's island a, off Italy? It is a magnificent island off Italy. Oh. It's down off the Amalfi Coast, mm. right? It's mm. very close to Capri. Yes. Very close to the Bay of Naples. It yes. is a fabulous place, and if you have never been there, yeah. you should definitely go. Well, this has got a, I've got a million places in the world to go before I die, so yeah. I'll just put it on the list. Well, you haven't got much longer, um, so if I were you, I'd start booking some holidays. Listen, I've got something fantastic to tell you. Before I tell you anything else, go on. Kev says Sylvia Christel was Dutch, by the way. Yes. She was not French. Yeah, but she was, like, European. She was Anglicised, well, sort of, so, uh, so are, we, are we Europeans? Well, we're not anymore. We were. But by anyway, the way, somebody tweeted earlier mm, to mm, me, saying mm. that they listened to a show from about a year ago. Yes. Where you had banged on endlessly about how you couldn't wait to get out of the European Union. Well, that and might have been then. Hashtag hypocrite. Then is then, now is now. So you, now if, you don't want to be out of it. Well, Samuel Peep said a man who cannot change his life does not have a. A man who cannot change his mind does not have a mind. Yeah, so what happened to him? Yeah, look what happened to him. Yeah. Uh, and here's one from uh, Becky who says, Great start to the show. Was that no- noise Porky banging his head on the desk? Well, it could have been in frustration. Uh, listen, I've got to tell you something really exciting before I forget. Yes. You know that sometimes you and I have. Work to do outside of talk sport, and and some of it we do for the Sometimes, money. Sometimes, yes, and some of it we do because you know we just fancy doing it. And what do you some, mean for the money? So, well, you're paid for I doing things. Well, I mean, there's nothing wrong with being paid for doing. No, things. no, no. I agree. I agree. You don't make it sound but so sometimes, grubby. sometimes you do it for the sheer joy of what you're doing, and that's what I'm doing on Friday. What are you doing on Friday? I can't believe it. It's it's a two o'clock right, right. and it's a matinee, mm. and guess what? I'm hosting a party for the launch right. of the film Ab Fab. No. How about that? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that brilliant? Well, did you get the? Did somebody send you an invite by mistake? No, 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 this no. This is not that same crappy place in uh, no. Red Hill or whatever it is. No, I don't, I don't want to go into Where that. you were supposed to go and see the James Bond well, film, Well, right? it could be, it could but be. But you got it wrong. It could be. Uh, you are not... No, I don't uh, believe you. What? Show me the invitation. Uh, it's not an invitation, mate. It's. I have been contacted and said, would you host this party? By whom? It's... 
by the organisers. Who are the organisers? The organisers are a local uh, company. Oh, right. so I mean, it's a local theatre. It, it, no, it's a promotional thing. So they've thing. gone, who on earth can we get to no. drag in a few punters? No, no. It's a Let's pro- get old Porky Parry. No, no, it's a promotional yeah. thing. And, and actually, it's not in Surrey, it's down on the coast. So it's... Uh, on the coast? It's not very far from where we did a show at the Portsmouth Guildhall, to be oh, honest. Oh, so it's down in Portsmouth? Yes, exactly, right. yeah. And, and uh, how many of the cast are going to be there? Joanna Lumley? Oh, I don't know about that. I'm so sure. no members of the McCarthy. Well, I have no there. idea. I would imagine she'd be in the West End in Leicester Square on Friday no, night or something the, like they, that. No, they had the premiere last night. Oh, did they? Yeah. Oh, well, okay. She might have moved down to the coast. Who knows? But isn't it fantastic? Don't you think it was a great show? No. Ab Fab. No, oh, well, no, I yes, think it was wonderful. Yes, Ab Fab was a good show. Exactly. And the film will be very good. But yes. I don't see the connection between you and China Lumley. Oh, I do. What's that? Well, you know, for instance, it's all based on the sort of PR um, journalism industry, isn't yeah. it? The whole thing. One's, one's the head mm. of a PR agency. Well, they spend most of their time absolutely bladderating. Yeah, well, that, that's that's what we spent the most of our time doing well, in Fleet Street for about that. 30 years. You, you know say what I mean? that, but, you know, some of us weren't quite as ridiculous about it as you were. By the way, one of your mates has died recently, unfortunately. One of Somebody my mates. sent me a note, because, you know, I'm in all these journalistic sort of charities. Yeah. Did, and he, all go, that kind did of he go blind? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, he, he might have done. I don't know. He, he was quite old when he died. Yeah, go on. What's and, his name? Uh, uh, Jonathan Davis, was it? Jonathan Davis. Same name as the athlete, but not the athlete. Is it the athlete's still alive. Is it D-A-V-I-S? Uh, is it D-A-V-I-S? That's a good question. I, I, uh, hang on, I'll name, find it here. The find name here. rings a bell, but there's, it, a, there's a lot of Jonathan Davis. I've got around. my bulletin from the... Uh, oh, death bulletin. Hang on. Hey? Hey? Death bulletin. I seem to have lost my bulletin. Hang yeah. on, wait a minute. Um, You've lost a lot more than Let me read you this no, from no. Mark. He yeah, says, on. perfectly put, Mike Graham, about truth in football. Yes. They can't tell the truth. The secret footballer says they are trained yes. professional liars. Yes, yes. Well, I think that's right. No, that's a bit harsh. That's and bit... somebody has tweeted a picture of, of course, Jack Nicholson yes. for a few good men. Right. Uh, saying this, the truth... You can't handle the you truth. You can't handle the truth. I went to see that play in the West End a few years ago. It was put Did on you? by Mr Kenwright, yeah. Really? Uh, right, here are the, uh, the colleague of ours, who uh, sadly has passed away. A colleague of ours now, is it? Uh, yeah, it's John Davis, City News editor of the Daily Telegraph. All right. During a period of rapid expansion in business journalism. Mm. And he was famous, actually, for... I remember him now, uh, just vaguely, because he, he was coming to the end of his career did when you know I was him? starting mine. You, I, well, you met him, did you? if you remember, the Express Building in Fleet Street was right next door to the Telegraph, mm. and the Telegraph lads used to use the cross Keys, right? Right. Yeah. Which was next door, wasn't yes, it? Yes, it was. It and all across the road was it? the Tipperary. The Tipperary was yeah. across the road, I think. Uh, the upstairs bar of the and Tipperary. And up to the right was the Printer's Pie. Yeah, that's right. Printer's and, Pie. And the puncher was down the left. Printer's Pie was uh, the, and the old. Used to use. What about the old Bell? That was opposite, down the bottom of yeah. Fleet Street, and the Punch Tavern was the last one in the street. I just said that. Oh, did you? Yeah. yeah. Right, and... Uh, no, listen, and the Harrow was down Boovery Street. Harrow was down Boovery Street, that's mm. right, yeah. And he used to... Uh, the stab in the back was up around the back of the mirror. Stab in the back, the white horse. Yes. Called the stab in the back, because yeah. that's where you got your, uh, your, your the bullet. Come up um, and... Yeah, yeah, and uh, he's, he always had a cigar in his mouth. He, and by the way, you should have known him, because he started uh, as an office junior in the Fleet Street office of the Glasgow Herald... Well, why should I know him from there? Uh, working day, frequently interrupted by air raids. That's how long he's been around, by the way. Uh, Excuse me. Yeah. Can I just ask, why should I know him from working in the Glasgow Herald? Well, because of your Scottish ancestry. I you didn't know. work in Scotland until uh, yes. beyond 2002. Yeah, well, I, you say I went that. to Scotland to work in 2002. Yes, yes. Right? Uh, anyway, it wouldn't surprise you to say, just one more fact about Mr John Davis, RIP. Yeah. Um, the only business leader I ever fell out with was a guy called Robert Maxwell, oh, yeah. who every business... Uh, reporter fell out with, uh, but, you know, they had their... Did he ever work on the Sunday Times? Because my business career was mostly forged yes. on the Times yes. and the Sunday Times. Yes, well... a fascinating story to tell you, actually, yes. about how I got into business journalism. Oh, that'd be good, yeah, yeah. let's hear that. Would you like to hear that? Yes, please, Well, yeah. by a bizarre coincidence, mm. my sister and I both ended up working for uh, what can only be described as Indian and Pakistani millionaires, right? Yes. I worked for the shipping magnate who bought the paper, the magazine I was working for called the um, uh, Asian Post. Oh, yeah, where right? was this based? Uh, it was based in Hounslow, Oh, okay. Funnily enough. Mm-hmm. But as a result of that, I went to India a couple of times. I was tapped up for a job there. Right. This guy, Mahmoud Sipra, was his name. He was a Pakistani millionaire, yes. shipping magnate. Oh, yeah. uh, he actually made a movie starring Michael Caine. I like that. And a couple of other people. He I was like a really shipping cool magnates. Guy. Great he lived people. In, lived in Mayfair. Remember, Amazing guy. Do you remember Aristotle Onassis? Yes. What a guy he was. He was. He married Jacqueline Bouvier. Exactly. Yeah. My sister went to work for a company uh, called mm-hmm. Essel Limited, which was run yeah. by the Setia brothers, right? And the Setia oh, yes. brothers were Indians. Oh, yes. And they made a fortune out of basically selling... Uh, the idea that they would bring you a shipload of sugar yeah. from Nigeria to London. Right. They would borrow the money on the basis of the sugar that was being put on the ship yes. that was going to arrive in London yes. from uh, the Bank of Baroda in England, right. which was uh, you know a very corrupt Indian banking system. Right? <laughs> yeah. uh, they would get all Sounds this... Sounds a bit uh, dodgy, get, No, that's very true. They would mm. get all this money from the Bank of Baroda, mm. but the ship didn't exist. 
the oh. sugar didn't exist, yeah, and the money didn't exist. So what was insurance for? And it turned it? well, it turned out that basically mm. uh, the setiers, all of them, yeah. went, were, were were wanted by Interpol. Yeah, uh, and my sister and I worked so for both of these people basically. at the same time. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. I just moved to New York at the time, mm-hmm. and suddenly when all this kicked off, mm-hmm. I rang the Times business news desk and yes. said. Uh, excuse me, I know, I know quite, all about this. I know quite a lot about this, yes. and they went, "Oh, great! Can you send yeah. us a big memo about it?" Yeah. And from that point on, it became their New York correspondent. That's amazing. Isn't Good that amazing? story. Good yeah. story. And, and both uh, both of the people that we worked yeah. for ended up going to prison. That's amazing. Yeah. Uh, but the Indian hitman never came after you in New York to they never silence did. you. No, they never yeah. did. Yeah, well, they never did. Well, it was too late. Because what they used to do yeah, was the Indian right. banks, and I'm making no secret, and of course it's different yeah. now, but basically if you had a case of Johnny Walker Black mm-hmm. and you went to an Indian bank yes. and you said, look, I want you to do this for me, yes. they would do it. Yes. They would go, look, you want some, you want to lend you money? Mm. As long as you don't go back to buy it's on the backside. Yes. You know, there were hookers involved, there was whiskey involved, bribery and all that sort of thing. And it made no difference, right, yeah. to them that mm. these bills of lading for sugar mm-hmm. that didn't exist mm-hmm. uh, didn't actually, um, you know, exist at all I in think, the real world. I it's think amazing. there was one episode of uh, Dallas, which, of course, is the greatest TV series ever produced. It is fictional, though, and, don't forget. Uh, yeah, I know, yeah, but I still base my life on the principles and the philosophy of J.R. Ewing. How's that going? Uh, well, you know, I, 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 I've uh, I've made my way in life He's by... dead, of course, isn't he? Yeah, he's dead now, yeah. So is the actor, in fact, who yeah. played him, uh, Larry Hagman. And uh, in one, he uh, they quote conveniently lost a um, a tanker full of oil yeah. in the Mexican Gulf. Yes, but of course the uh, it never existed. You know what I mean? Mm. It's one of those sort of deals. Yes, exactly. Um, there was a lot of that going on at the time. Yeah. Now, now, then, now how about this from uh, yes. uh, from Bert, who says uh, mm. Porky has a few things in common with Joe and Lumley, mm-hmm. as they are both old and wrinkly. Oh, that's very nice, isn't it? That's a bit unchivalrous, isn't it? Very unchivalrous indeed. I don't mind being called old and wrinkly, but not Gianna Lumley, the most lovely woman. And, Mm. I mean, look at the way that uh, her career has spanned so many decades. She was Purdy in uh, The Avengers. Yeah. And then she was... uh, What's her her name in uh, in Abfab? She's... uh, One of them is... um, Lovey, lovey, lovey. Lovey. Uh, no, what's it, what's it called? You're a big fan of the show. If you yeah. go open yeah. the, uh, mm. you know, the premiere of the movie, yes. do you not think you should actually study the names of the Oh, characters? I will. Don't worry. I mean, I'm, I'm just a bit excited about it at the moment. Yeah. But uh, one, of the, one of them is called Patsy. She's called Patsy. Patsy is Lovely, Patsy, yes. Patsy, that's right. Yeah. And the other, the other one. And she's brilliant, by the way, the other one. What's her name, the actress? She writes the well, it was Well, it was, it was uh, Saunders, wasn't it? Yeah, Frenchman that's Saunders. right, that's right, Jennifer Saunders. Jennifer Saunders. Brilliant woman, yeah. brilliant woman who, 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 you know, represented our industry absolutely perfectly. You're happy with her, are you? Oh, very happy okay. indeed. Is she going to be at the opening of this uh, movie? Well, one would hope so. If they hear I'm there, who knows? No. I might come down. They're not going to be there. Mm. Chris says this, when it comes to secrets, footballers should see nothing, hear nothing, and save the stories mm-hmm. for the autobiography. Yeah. You're right about um, Southgate. I've just received a set of uh, the back pages for tomorrow morning. Yeah. Down south, under twenty one boss snubs England job, even as caretaker. Gone south. It's all they've all played on the word south. Yeah. Yeah, because of course yeah. his name's Southgate. I mean, if Gareth Southgate Great doesn't crusher. want the England job, right? Mm. Then what does that tell you about the state of English football? I think it tells you an awful lot. We will continue to talk about this and we'll ask Warren Barton about it coming up next on Talksport. Running away together, running away. There you go. Look up there at the TV screen. Uh, yeah. They've got uh, uh, Jennifer Saunders and Joe Anna Lumley. Well, I've got the report the, uh, of, uh, of last night's um, in the unveiling. premiere. In yeah, the yeah. premiere, that was Angelo, yeah. by the way. Do you recognise? Yeah, him? it was great, wasn't it? Yeah. And it was Brotherhood Man, wasn't it? It was running from every yeah, stranger, really hiding from no. all the danger. Angelo. I mean, yeah. did you ever know anybody like these two? Like who, which time? two? Yeah, these two. Well, I suppose Eve I mean, Pollard was very close to being one of the... Except, well, except that, well, in fairness, who, Eve was a very competent journalist you know and they were always portrayed as a couple who, of incompetence. But you know who it was based on, do you? It was based on uh, Liz, 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 Liz... Yeah, Liz. Liz? 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 Are you sure? Yeah? No, it was with Lynn. Lynn. It was Lynn. based on Lynn Foles. Lynn Franks. Lynn Franks, that's right. <laughs> Very famous uh, PR woman that's in right. Fleet Street. She yeah. was the first sort of PR... She was. Uh, to, ...to be the star of the whole kind of PR scenario. Yeah, I mean, what did she do? Promote, like, models and all that kind well, of no, stuff? Well, no, she just was one of those women who started a company and mm. it was in the days post Thatcher. Oh, yeah. post Thatcher and all that. Yeah. And she began a PR company and she was the, the first person to yeah. recognise that actually newspapers weren't as powerful as they used to be. And if you started making your yeah. tail wag there, dog, mm. as it were, you would soon become the dog and they would soon become the tail. And she basically said to you, if you're not willing yeah. to write this about my client, yeah. then you're not going to interview them. Yeah, I see. And it's a bit like what Hollywood then started doing after that, you know? Well, uh, do you know what? The crook Max Clifford uh, cashed in on that yeah. very big style, didn't he? He did, yeah. 
you know, doing deals with, well, you know, you might have a bad story about client A. Yeah. Drop that, and I'll give you a better story about yeah. client B. Exactly. All that kind yeah. of stuff. He was a broker. It's a very sort yeah. of dark art yeah. of the things that used to go on there. Yeah, absolutely. By the way, before we still get carried yeah. away about... Uh, oh, there's Carly Minogue as well. Oh, yes. Everyone was saying, why were you not the Premier, then? Well, I didn't want to go to the I mean, Premier tonight. Can you, the... bit, can you tell us a bit more about this shabby event you've been invited to? No, I'm not, I'm, <laughs> no, I'm not indulging in any sort of ridiculous conversation like that. Is it, you... is it a black tie do? Uh, no, it's not. Can I come? Uh, no, you can <laughs> push off because is I want some it, fat, like greasy-haired slob like, like you like, knocking is it, around. Is it like at the Sutton Odeon, screen three? Uh, no, it is not. I've told you, haven't I? I've Where told is it you. at, though? No, you didn't tell me. I've told you. It's yeah, down you on the coast. It's down the coast. Oh, it's down in Portsmouth. Yeah, well, not exactly Portsmouth. It's well, down the coast. Well, can you be more specific? No, because I'm not going to have you follow me around and trying to <laughs> gate crash, OK? I would be too busy this weekend, no, by the way. No, We've no, got to no, work no. on Sunday. I know your, I know your methods. We've got to work on Sunday, don't forget, from one till four. Anywhere where there's a free glass of warm wine, you'll be no. barging through no. the door. I know yours. I, I know your can I tell the story? Operandi. Can I tell the story of our good friend Andrew, our friend who works for BA? Andrew, uh, oh, yes. Uh, yeah. Who was kind enough to offer a, proffer a few gifts to us yesterday. Oh, yeah, right? yeah. Well, I haven't had, now, had mine yet. Have I? Uh, yeah, no, I presented you with it this morning. Oh, the wine, thank and you. And it was yes. a very nice bottle very of nice. Uh, what Thank you, you very much any, indeed, what Andrew. What you would describe as a kind of uh, Van du Pay, which is sort of country wine. Yeah. Which he gave to you. He gave me, yeah. knowing that I'm more of a connoisseur, yeah. a bottle of Chateau Neuf du Pape. Oh, well, I like my Van nice. I intend to eat it with some rustic French bread and cheese. You're going to eat it? In the garden. I yeah. thought you told mm. me that I should mm. use it for cooking. Oh, don't be ridiculous. That's what you said to me. Well, I said I'd never use and wine I, for you know, cooking. And I'm quite happy to do that. You know, it sounds very insulting. Um, you know, to the chap who gave it to us. Thank Andrew, you very much, yes. Andrew. Good chap. Yeah, you're very uh, nice guy. Yeah, right. Now, uh, uh, what was I going to tell you? How about 25 quid you owe me, by the way? Oh, no, no I don't owe you any money, yes, mate. Yes, you do. Oh, no, I don't. No, well, no. we had a bet, did we not, yesterday? On the show. Live uh, on radio. Uh, there's a percentage uh, error. Uh, there's a percentage uh, error. No, you said £25. Yes. Marcus Willis. Yes. Taking on Roger Federer. Yes. You said he will not get six games. I said not get more than six games. Well, he got seven. Well, no, he got none in the first set. He got seven games. He got none in the first set. He got three How in the second set. How many games did he set. get? Ah, oh, yeah, but no, I said it would average out at less than two yeah. a set. Well, and I'm right. No, I'm you're right. not. I'm right. How many, what was the third set? There was a percentage error, right? What was the score in the third set? 6-4. Right. And, and, the thir- and the second set? 6-3. And what does four and three make? Uh, and in the first, it was six love. That's so right. it averages out at 2.2. So I was right. I was absolutely right. No, you were not. 2.3, actually. Well, 2. if it's 2.3 per set, yeah. if, that's what you're, if that's what you're arguing, yeah. it's actually 2.33333 recurring, yeah. which makes seven. Uh, no, Does it doesn't. Not? It's Times an average. Three. It's, anyway, look, let's not get into that. You never paid me the £100, oh, which no, you owe I, me no, I took for the Cooman um, no, appointment. No, I took the £100 off the money you owe me. So what I'm willing to do, if you're not happy to actually give me the cash, is I'll just take uh, the 25 back. So that you, there's only 75 now reduced off the million quid. The chance, the chances of you ever paying me anything you owe me is, is so remote. I don't owe you anything. So, oh, you owe me thousands. You owe me a million uh, quid. Uh, no, no, no. How do I owe you thousands? How would you work that um, out? Listen, I've been reading some of the political analysts, don't right? Change the subject. No, I've been reading some political analysts. And, I mean, and quite serious, considering we opened the show with a bit of political thought. Yes. Our own political thought. Not yes. boring political thought, but constructive political thought. And a few of the political analysts that I've been looking at the last two days said, actually, the EU could have disintegrated and fallen apart even before we've triggered the, you know, Clause 50 or whatever it is to uh, to start the withdrawal process, which takes two years. Oh, yeah. by, the end, by the time we get to the end of the two years, there might not be an EU there to have left in the no. first place. And I'll tell you what's even more fascinating yes. than that. Did you see the story yes. about Sarah Vine and her email well, that's amazing. to Boris Johnson? That's amazing. Now, now, this will tell you more than you need to know. Explain to our listeners, please. Right, well, the story is this. Apparently, Sky News got, the, got their hands on an email that's right. that was sent by Sarah Vine, who's married to Michael Gove, right? So she Michael is Gove, main contender for the is, leadership of the Tory yes, party. She, well, and also main Brexiteer, exactly. along with Boris Johnson, right? Exactly. Uh, he was, what, the Minister for Justice, I think he was? Yep. Uh, still is, I believe. Yes, yeah. Um, however, here's the thing. She writes an email... To her husband. Yes. Now, I have to say... That in itself is weird, isn't it? I mean, I've been involved in many relationships with many women. (laughs) Yeah. um, But if you are married to someone... Oh, yeah, there's a lot of women know that to their cost. Yeah, yeah. you do not send an email like this... Mm. To your husband, right? Yeah. Because it reads like an email that's been written by her polit- his political advisor. It does. And in the email, she's done two things which I think are going to scupper him mm. and scupper her. Mm. The first thing is that she says basically that, you know, do not agree to do anything for Boris unless you get specific um, guarantees from him yeah. about what he's going to offer you in the new government, right? Yes. But more damaging than that, I think, mm. is her line where she says... 
Nobody basically trusts um, uh, Boris Johnson, That's right. including Dacre, yeah. in her view, yeah. uh, which is Paul Dacre, the man who runs the Daily Mail. Yes, that's right. Uh, and Murdoch. <laughs> who runs in, everything else. As in Rupert Murdoch. <laughs> yeah, the actual, yeah. the actual uh, specific quote is, yeah. crucially, the membership will not have the necessary reassurance to back Boris, neither will Dacre or Murdoch, who instinctively dislike Boris, mm. but trust your ability enough to support a Boris t- Gove ticket. Can you imagine what Dacre's thinking now? Well, she this writes for Dacre. Yeah. She well, writes a weekly he's column. Her, he's her boss, right? Yeah, yeah. She has now given away his personal belief that he yeah. doesn't like Boris Johnson. Yeah, exactly, yeah. I think she's going to be having a very, very difficult time at the Daily Mail from now on. Well, you say that, except for the fact that I'm told that because she is married to Michael Gove, Michael Gove might yet end up as Prime Minister, certainly could end up as uh, Home Secretary. Yeah. Um, in a, you or know, Chancellor, even. Or Chancellor, absolutely right, yeah, or might, more likely Chancellor, yeah, in a, in a Boris-driven government. Yeah. Um... Uh, Paul Dacre is told by his um, employers, who are the uh, Rothschild family, right? Yeah. Uh, that th- this woman is a very important member of his staff yeah. because she is the wife of a very senior politician. And apparently, according to a report I read, I don't know if it's uh, entirely accurate, she sometimes wanders into editorial meetings late and, you know, sort of flounces around as though she's, you know, got a special relationship with the editor, which seems to irritate uh, Mr Dacre, although I hope I'm not speaking out of turn. And uh, and so it's all fascinating to see how the power game works, isn't it, in the corridors of power at government, in Whitehall, in Fleet Street. Absolutely fascinating insight. It really is absolutely mm. right. Mm. But, I mean, and even more so yeah. when you find out that, uh, as, as, as we were saying earlier, Jeremy Corbyn mm. still fighting for his life, still thinks well, he's going to hang on in there. So you don't quite Basically, nobody... That. I mean, I was telling you yesterday, mm. I was on the radio today in Australia yes. and in California with the lovely Donna Harvey. OK. And I basically said, look, nobody is running the country, but actually, mm. it's running rather well without anybody running yeah, of course it, it is, yeah. So actually, yeah, totally it's, quite, it's quite nice. I totally agree. Um, you say that, that uh, Jeremy Corbyn won't quit, and yet the, the Tomorrow Morning's Times newspaper on its front, Labour insiders say Corbyn king to quit. Yeah. Jeremy Corbyn won to stand down, but he's being blocked by his hard-left allies trying to keep control of Labour. Yeah. And, and this is absolutely right, and by that they mean, like, senior... Union barons, yes. who of course fund the majority of the money in the Labour and Party. Also, were they not also responsible for bringing in the great idea of Ed Miliband? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. So the last great idea they had yeah, didn't yeah, work out right. too well. Yeah, it didn't work out too well. You're absolutely right. Mm. Anyway, look, that's all a bit boring and stuff. I think we should talk about uh, lighter things, right? Now, I want to ask you about this, and you may not need to do it now, right? But yesterday, because mm. I was listening to the podcast a little bit earlier on, yeah. yesterday you promised to tell me about the dangers of giggling, yes, and how that could be in some way be- uh, it's either infectious. good or bad for you. It's infectious. And I'm not sure whether. Uh, it it's infectious. infectious. I'll tell you about that in a minute, but right. I want to tell you, I, I will tell you about that, but I, I, want, to, I want to tell you about uh, other things involving animals, right? So I'm preparing some uh, material here about a parrot, that, a is parrot. Go- that is going to give evidence at a murder trial oh, really? in New York. Do you know, I walked down, down the road today just before I came to talk to yeah. Towers, and there was a guy with a blue parrot on his shoulder. Uh, there's a guy who, in a pub that I use sometimes down in Sutton, in, not Sutton, further down, I think it's Cheam in Surrey. Oh, yeah. I get in there sometimes, the guy has a parrot sitting on his shoulder, he wears a black leather coat. Really? Yeah. What uh, sort of parrot is it? Uh, the parrot that's going to be in the murder trial... Uh, no, I mean the parrot African the, grey. An African grey. African grey. Well, this was a blue one that I saw. And I've got evidence from one of my agricultural journals of how pigs are the happiest animals. Pigs? And, and how you can tell. How? Well, they grunt a lot. The uh, the happy ones <laughs> uh, oink, oink more. What a load of old rubbish. No, you know, farmers actually... Constant farm, Farmers actually stand next to the pig pens and count the number of oinks that a pig gives in a minute. And the more oinks from a pig, the happier the pig is. There's more to a pig's oink than meets the ear with happier porkers meets making... The ear. Yeah, yeah, meets the... Mean meets the eye. No, meets the ear. Meets, meets the ear. That's the whole it, point. How does it meet the There's ear? There's more to a pig's oink than meets the ear. You can't see an oink. You can hear an oink. With happier porkers <laughs> making more noise than grumpy <laughs> ones. This is a, 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 a scientific research... It's also emerged that pigs with curious temperaments are more likely to grunt and squeal than their less inquisitive pals. Have you seen Deliverance? Hey? Have you seen Deliverance? Uh, yes. Squeal like a pig! Yeah, that's right, yeah. 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 Frightening scene, that. Yeah, it is. But this is from the University of Lincoln. Really? Yeah, where they've got a lot of pigs over there, you know. Yeah. Isn't that where they've got the Bent Cathedral? No. You said it was a Bent Cathedral. No, 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 no. Lincoln. You're talking about Chesterfield, the no, spire no, no, in Chesterfield. No. You said the Cathedral of Lincoln uh, is at a tilt. No. Yes, you did. No, I've never said that. Yes, you have. I know a lot about cathedrals. Do you? I know, oh, by the way, I'm going to change the quiz. Going right, to change well, the quiz. well, you can't change the quiz. We'll talk about that in a minute. This is Talk Sport. This 
This is Talk Sport. We are the two mics coming up in uh, the next hour. We're going to be talking yeah. about dinosaurs and birds and links to all of that. We're talking about yeah. giggling as well. Uh, you were talking about pigs earlier. Uh, here's one from Becky. You yeah. says, great information about oinking pigs. Yes. I will think about that next time I eat a bacon sandwich. Was yeah. it a happy well, or sad pig? Well, look, you know, uh, there's a food chain situation here which you all have to accept. But it actually says, scientists from the University of Lincoln... Uh, studied 72 male and female juvenile pigs. Half were placed in spacious, enriched pens with straw bedding, but the rest were put in compact barren pens with parch- partially slatted concrete floors right. in accordance with British welfare standards. To test the pigs' personalities, researchers put them in a pen for five minutes with unfamiliar objects, a large white bucket or an orange traffic cone a to try and... A large white bucket? Yeah, or an orange traffic cone to I'm try sure you've and... stared into a few of those in your time. Uh, to... Uh, it's, what did you call it? The big white telephone. Uh, the big white, Ugh, the big porcelain, the porcelain up. telephone. Porcelain telephone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, not that I ever did that. Uh, I can't imagine you would. No, uh, uh, or a traffic cone to stimulate their in, uh, intelligent thinking process. Uh-huh. Their grunts of behaviour were logged, and the test was repeated a fortnight later to see if they acted in the same way. Study published today in the Royal Society Journal, Open Why Science. Shouting? Hey, I'm just oh, emphasising things. Found pigs with more proactive personalities, <laughs> those keener to explore their environment, grunted more than the reactive animals. Isn't that fascinating? Really? Mm, 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 mm. No, it's not that fascinating, actually. Here's one from Charles who says, yeah. if Porky wants to see an oink, tell him to look in the mirror. Ha, ha, ha. I don't think he means the newspaper, either. No, he doesn't. No. Um, anyway, expert Mary Friel said, understanding how the vocalisation of pigs relates to their personality mm. will help animal behaviourists and welfare experts... <laughs> this is all rubbish. ..have a clearer picture <laughs> of the impact those personalities have on communication and its role in the evolution of behaviour... And group dynamics. Really? What a complete well, load of rubbish. What, Why no, did anybody well, waste any time well, or money doing that survey? Well, let's talk about group dynamics hey? in a different way. Group right? dynamics? Because we need to talk about Warren Barton. Okay. Uh, we need to talk to Warren Barton, rather, about yeah. the group dynamics of England. Yes. And the group dynamics of the FA. We do. Uh, and about what they're going to do about finding a new manager. Excellent. Warren, uh, a very good morning to you. Good morning, my friends. How are you? How are Hello, you mate. Very well. I must uh, must apologise to you about that sort of nonsense that Porky was sport, uh, spouting there. But but in fairness to him, it wasn't any more nonsensical than what we've been watching coming out of the mouths of some certain uh, FA executives and Roy Hodgson the last few days. You know, I mean, it's hugely disappointing. You know, um, one uh, not winning the group, and you think we well, get a second chance. And that performance was the net. It was no idea, lacking of passion, um, lacking of any invention. Um, people like Vardy was left out, which you know, everybody knew we, we wanted him to play, so his hunger shows his desire. Alana was playing well uh, to, to a level to, to have that opportunity. So, uh, very embarrassing. Um, they deserved it. It's not as if we, Iceland, you know, we come away thinking, well, we've got lucky, like maybe in Euro 96, etc., etc. This time it was embarrassment. Um, the FA need to make a, a, a huge decision. Um, where last time there's people like Capello was out there. Stengel and Erickson, the ones that you would like to think of England would be like a Wenger or Pep or these type of people, they're already in a job and in a, in a sound job. And it's um, the players are, are have to have a look at their skills and think Joe Hart is right. I mean, he looked very nervous after the Gareth foul. Uh, and you say, well, he's got character, he's got leadership, but he didn't need to deteriorate in that. It, more and more the game went on and that spread throughout the team. Um, so there's a, a real sense of um, disappointment and a reality check as well. You know, we're not good enough. We yeah. Saying we're one of these nations that are going forward. We're not. And yeah. I think it starts from, from top to bottom. I'm pleased that Gareth Southgate is saying, well, no, I want to concentrate on that because we've got to get the, the under-21s, we've got to get the 17s, the 18s correct and then build from there. But sure. it's a real reality check because I just deserve to beat us rather than maybe coming away saying, well, we were unlucky, we missed the penalty, should have had a referee decision. We got yeah. beaten fair and square, and you have to take that on the chin like um, like, like we have to do from time to time. Yeah, no, no, Warren, you're absolutely right. Warren, did you ever come across Roy Hodgson during your football career in this country? Yeah, yeah, many times with, yeah. with Roy. You know, a likeable man. Um, well, that's it, that's it, a likeable man. But in yeah. my, to my mind, never had the distinctive personality and the charisma and the aggression that a, a football manager needs to instil the fighting spirit into his players. I thought he was totally unsuited to the game. I think he's far too intellectual to be the sort of man who can get the best out of footballers. Yeah, I just look at, you know, the top players at, say, Liverpool, you know, the likes of Gerard and, and Carrick, the yeah. rumours that are coming out there that he couldn't handle men. And when you're a national team coach, you're only going to have them for 
five or six days. And yes. that's he likes a thing like Fulham where he can you know, maybe tell the players what to do, take their advice, take them forward and help them and guide them. Yeah. International level, you've got to lead men. And, and unfortunately, that's not Roy's strength. You know, very intelligent man, speaks multiple languages, gets on with different players, but even with Berto Carlos come out yeah. and, and said that he you know, didn't fancy me as a player. So you, you're getting all these these players that have been men, international men, that don't need to listen too much about systems, tactics. You've got to guide sure. them. And we had no guidance going forward there. Sure. But isn't it also true, Warren, that you, know, you look at some of the other teams and the way they've performed, and, and there's a lot of good teams in this tournament, right? Wales much better as a team collectively than they are as a, as, a, as a collection of individuals. Italy at the moment, you'd have to say, no real stars in the team but playing brilliantly. Uh, you'd have to say Iceland have done the same thing. You'd have to say uh, Poland actually have done the same thing. Lewandowski hasn't really done much at all, but, but they've somehow got through as a team. Germany always work as a team. What is it about the England players that say they can't seem to play as a team? Is that the coach's fault or is it their fault? I think also, you know, you do have uh, different personalities in there, but I think we are hitting nail on the head. We have no identity. I don't know what we play. You, when Brazil play, you know how they play. The Germans, when they play, the Italians, they're always, even if they dilute a little bit from their foundations, the Italians, because he, he's gone back to his foundations of being solid, organised, disciplined. All teams, you know, don't tell me Wales are a, you know, a team that's got better individuals than Germany or Spain. But they work well as a team. Chris will have them organised and have an identity. Mm. So when they play, Northern Ireland had an identity. OK, it's not everybody's idea and cup of tea and philosophy, but they have, England, I think, we didn't know. We're going into games, he's making six changes. We're not sure where the team's playing. He was having a bad time. The poor kid was having a bad Take him out the firing line. Put Vardy, he was hungry, he was enthusiastic, he listed the fans. Now the young kid Rashford come on. He had more of an impact, Rashford, in seven minutes. He did. I'd say about eight or nine turn of the players. So yeah. we don't have that identity. And in the past, when we've had the likes of Gerard and Lampard and Ashley Cole and Rio and things like that, it just maybe having that, you know, with Sven was more wanting to be there when he was a bit too close to the players like Beckham and maybe let them have chips. That's when you need a man. Capello come in and is a bit too stagnant. It wasn't our identity. So yeah. I think we have to get that. What is our identity? What is, what is England's team identity? When Sir Bobby Robson had success, with the likes of Pierce and Shields in there. They had personality, they had a presence about their place. You've got to have some sort of identity because, as I said, you know when Brazil put a shirt on how they're going to play. That's yeah. their identity and that's how they play. Who do you fancy as the next England and manager then, Warren? Um, you know, as I said, the ones that you would really like who would get the, you know, the country by the scruff of the neck and really shake the FA up and not be dictated by the FA would be a Pep Guardiola, that sort of person. Well, I like Sam Allardyce, you say. I don't think Pep Gu- Guardiola idea. would come. I like Sam Allardyce. He doesn't want because, the job. Well, Gareth Southgate doesn't want the job. Uh, Sam Allardyce, Allardyce does want the job. No, he doesn't. He does. No. I, I tell you who's being mooted tomorrow, and I think it's ridiculous, Warren, is uh, uh, Louis-Philippe Scolari. Big Phil, as he's known in this country. He's in China at the moment, isn't he? Yeah, I mean, do you remember? Brian Barwick chased him into Europe, yeah. into over to Portugal, ten years ago. And when he got there, he said, no, I don't like your press, in, uh, I don't like the newspaper industry in England, I don't want it, thanks, and turned it down. But according to reports that we're getting, uh, which will be published tomorrow, he, I mean, that's ridiculous, he doesn't even speak good English. You've got the old, uh, you know, the um, Capello problem again. If he can't communicate with the players, he can't get the best out of them, can he? No, exactly. I mean, you're just going back then in time. I think you need to look forward to someone who's, uh, you know, hungry, maybe a younger guy. I don't see anything wrong with big say experience and going forward. You know, look at what uh, Klinsmann did when he took over at Germany. He didn't go well at Bayern Munich, but he got the understanding of the players and got the most right. OK, he left, and then they had to go with uh, like But I think you you need to have someone that has an identity with the country. I'm not saying it has to be English. I'm, I really don't. Uh, I'm not I'm one of them that's got to be Sam Allardyce. It's got to be part of Jewish. Yeah. If you're good enough, I don't care where you're from, but Solari would be an old school going back. It may have a, an issue impact for a couple of, uh, you know, a year, 18 months, but then it's going to fade away. We need someone that's going to take the team forward because they are talented players. Danny Ali's a good player. Yeah. You know, they're all good players. A lot of they, they don't become bad players, but they just needed some... They needed a man to guide them going forward, and they didn't have that. And you they, keep saying that, Warren. You, 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 you keep saying this about... Well, his inference, his inference I think, yeah. is that they're basically they're not grown up. Well, is no, you're saying, no, I think you're saying that Roy uh, Hodgson is a weakling who can't uh, control big personalities, like Jack Wilshire, maybe, you know, maybe like uh, Jamie not a big Vardy. Personality. Sorry? They're not big personalities, they're babies. Well, well they're babies. They're personalities that need handling. No, they're babies. No, what do you think, not. Warren? 
Yeah, you, you need to you need their they need to be told uh, their players, and if they get players will get away with things and they test people. And if Roy lets it go and Ray Lurrington and Gary Neville don't stamp it out, there'll be anarchy. There'll be, and that's in the training, that's on the bus, that's in, yep. the, in the changing room, that's in the hotel. Terry Venable was dealt with men. When I was in, I can only tell by my time, Hodder was the same as well. Hodder would deal with men and yep. speak to them face to face. And he may not he, he may not get on with everybody, he may not... Uh, Hoddle's, Hoddle's way past it, though, Warren, isn't he? Else. Isn't Hoddle way past it? Yeah, I would think, I think, yeah. yeah. And, and also, there's a lot of uh, uncertainty with them what we've won on before and things like that. So I think we've moved on from that, yeah. that era. But someone who's, you know... It's gone into a club and understands like Southgate. I'm not saying now because I think he doesn't want it at the moment because I think he's doing a very good job with the under 21s. But wouldn't be overruled by going into uh, a changing room and speaking to these and dealing with players sure. and going forward. So you know, Germany as three years ago, there's a lot of young players. Look what they've done going forward. So I think we've got we've got the personality, we've got the players. Um, not maybe at the level of Germany or, or that understanding, but one, get mm. an identity, get someone that's going to lead the team and get someone that's tactically aware that can, can change it. And, yeah, we are going to uh, be a nation that expectations get high. Yep. So that's part and parcel of the job. And we spoke about this when the press said about the media. That's You know that when you take the job. Gary Neville knew that because he'd been on that side of it. Yep. To, to come out and, and say things and understand what the press is going for. All right, sure. have agendas, but that's part and parcel of it, of, the, of being a successful coach. Right. Yeah, no, I think you're absolutely right. Yeah. Warren, we've got to leave you there. Thank you very much indeed. Warren Thanks, Bartlett, Warren. Giving us a Great to hear from you, mate. Who should be the uh, next England manager. This is TalkSport. This is TalkSport. There will be, of course, a podcast coming out a little bit later on. A couple of tweets for you, Mr Parry. Yes. Uh, one from Stee. Uh, it says, ask the mighty mouth himself, Mr mm. Mike Porky mm. Parry, would you like the England job? You certainly talk a good game, sir. Uh, no, I wouldn't. Because... For £10,000 a day, of course you would. No, I wouldn't. No, I've, I've well, never... You fancy the scrutiny? No, it's not that. It's just, a, you know, if somebody offered me a job in broadcasting for mm. three and a half million a year, I'd take it. Well, since Mr Glenn admitted yeah. yesterday that yes. he's not an expert in football, yeah, I mean, exactly. that is apparently not a barrier. No, it, it, no, it'd be ridiculous. You'd have to know something about it. But, um, but look, the person I want to do the job has got to be somebody who understands British, uh, the British way of life and English footballers, and that does not include big Phil Scolari, who, yeah. to me, is a bumbling old man yeah. who doesn't speak enough English to do the job properly. We've well, already had one of them. Yeah, exactly, and he was trying to cash in on, on you know, uh, uh, as you quite rightly pointed out, a hugely lucrative job, yeah. and it's ludicrous. Absolutely right. And, and I think Gareth Southgate's turned it down because he knows that he's not up to it. Yeah, well, maybe. Let's yeah. hope that's the case. Yeah. Jakob says this, if Mike Perry attempts to predict today's score, can please uh, Mike Graham do whatever necessary to stop him saying Poland are going to win? Say that again, sorry? He doesn't want you to predict Poland to win. Oh, I see, because, because the other side will be, win. Because it'll be the Porky Jinx. Or yeah, well, he Jinx. says the Porky Jinx. The Porky Jinx is a load of rubbish. No, you know, people, people uh, manipulate that to their, to their own uh, no. advantage. Every time you, you predict somebody's going to win, they end no. up losing. No. Now, how about this? I'm indebted to a guy who calls himself Mike Lewis 3866 on Twitter. Yeah. He says this, How naive are you two? Gove's missus is in cahoots with Dacre to mm. besmirch the hapless bojo in order to advance Gove. I don't think that's the case. Of but course it's not. But what's very uh, weird about the whole thing is that um, I've seen a printout of the of the email. Yes. And it says, from Michael Gove yeah. to Sarah Grove. Sorry, yeah. sorry, from Sarah Grove to Michael Gove. Yeah. I mean, that's like the famous story about... Lord Alan Sugar sending a uh, Christmas card to his wife, which mm. said, from Alan Sugar. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's very impersonal, yeah, but isn't you it, can, for a man but, and wife? Yeah, but you can understand how that could happen in a Christmas card situation, because if you're mm. Alan Sugar, you've probably got yeah, an assistant. Yeah, you just sign a load of you've them, You've got yeah. an assistant who hands you yeah. 100 cards. That's right. I mean, you've done that in the past as well, I have, you? actually, where yeah. Where you used to just sign a load of cards for people. It, it's Although, true. funnily enough, I never ever got a card from yes. you. Yes. Bizarrely. From but, me? No, from you, never, no. I've, I've still got a Christmas card from you. I think I've shown it, haven't I? The cutout of the uh, Manhattan skyline. What, the one that I sent you? Yes. Yeah. But I chose it for you. No, you didn't. I came over one no, year and I said, where's your Christmas no. card? She said, I haven't got any. No, you didn't. So I went to a shop and got them. I, I, I did. I, I no. went to a printer's no, no. and I selected the no, I did. I selected the picture when I was and I got them printed I, for you. Are you talking about when I was president of the North American News Service? My uh, company. Yeah, yeah, it was, yeah, yeah, it was, yeah. yeah. No, I don't, no, I don't know how you inserted yourself into that story. No, I did. I sent you a Christmas card, yeah. which I had printed. No. Uh, and which I signed. I chose. I came in the... I no, came a didn't. month... I did. I came Rubbish. over on a virgin plane a month before Christmas Rubbish. on one of these, you know, let's go, go shopping well, to freebie. New York type trip. Yeah, a freebie. freebie. Like, I brought uh, young Kim with me, you know, the uh, young blonde uh, reporter. Kim Wilshire. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Who hates you. Uh, what do you mean? She hates you. No, she doesn't. She does. Uh, what She's do you She's always mean? on uh, Facebook uh, pouring bile over you. Oh, rubbish. It's not, it's not incorrect. Well, no, no, not. Would you like me to find some of it? 
Yeah, well, I'd like you to expose this as a, <laughs> as a, a ridiculous lie. It's true. How oh, she possibly hate me? I was a kind, caring boss to no, her. No, unfortunately, she doesn't see it that way. And we travel I over think on... She the... sees it as, yeah. as, as you trying to sort of, you know, muscle in, muscle as it in. were, and take her with you to New York on the grounds that you were her boss. What? Are That's you how mad? she sees it. No, nah, well, what? How do you know? You've never spoke to her about it. Uh, I have, actually. Oh, yeah, yeah really? We were in Bosnia together. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Well, we turned, up in, uh, we turned up in New York, mate, mm. and she didn't seem to have too many objections really? to uh, me escorting around really? New York at the time. Oh. She hadn't been there before, well, I don't think. Well, if, if you want me to, yes. I'll, I'll go back on Facebook and find uh, some of the evidence that I have. But I, I don't think that's that. completely unnecessary. I don't think I, I need to do that. I wouldn't worry about but it, anyway, mate. I'm indebted to Mike Lewis yes. for his incredible insight into mm. uh, the workings of national newspapers mm. and the government. Yes. Because, obviously, uh, you know, we know nothing about that. Mm. Uh, his next uh, tweet uh, is to Phil Williams, who works for the BBC. Oh, yes, and he yes. says, ask your travel correspondent, Phil, if Tehran is expensive. Thank you. If that's, Tehran that's, is expensive? Yeah, that's his other question. What's our... What's our well, I've no what, idea. Is that the price of fish uh, well, I don't, I don't question know why, for I don't, tonight? I don't know whether he's planning on going to what's Tehran. What's that got to do with the price of fish? I don't know why he's planning on going to Tehran. You're mad if you go to Tehran. Yeah. Tehran's like, you know, it's sort of cloud cuckoo land. Have you been there? No. <laughs> But, I mean, you can tell from the reports I read in the international... Uh, Press. You know, yes, exactly. Yes, yeah. of course. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Peter says this. Southgate's job at the under-21s is secure. Mm. Why take a job where you'll get pilloried by a nation for a year and thrown on the scrap heap? Yeah, well, I mean, if you get three well, years' salary, you get sacked after two, you get £3 I mean, million pound this what, payoff. This is what people don't mm. get. I mean, people say all the time that it's the media's fault because they, they put managers under so much pressure, yes. under so much scrutiny. That's, you know, guess what? That's why they pay you three mm. and a half million a year. Exactly. One of, the, one of the things that you have to do is handle the pressure. Yep. One of the things you have to do is deal with the press. You know, if you yeah. didn't have to handle the pressure and deal with the press, yes. you could be paid 50000 a year. Absolutely. But isn't that the point? Absolutely. Now, Becky's been a bit mischievous tonight. She says, um, wow, things are getting better. Uh, no faux pas pa- from... She spelled that wrong, actually. She says fox pas. Uh, from Porky today, even managed to call Warren Barton Warren and not Steve. <laughs> That's a bit harsh, isn't it? Yeah, well, you did manage to call Terry Fennick Steve yeah, uh, know, four yeah. times last night. Yeah, I know. Uh, and she goes on to say, I lived through the, the big Phil Scolari era at Chelsea. The yeah. guy was... Utterly hopeless. Yeah. England manager, no way. He was only there six months, wasn't he, at Chelsea? He wasn't there long, was he? Yeah, no, exactly, yeah. yeah. Mm. Daniel says this. Stop being so harsh on Roy. Focus mm-hmm. on the players. At international level, the coach is just a figurehead. Yes. Incorrect, Daniel, mm. because I think if you remember watching Italy uh, beating Spain, mm. one of the things that Danny Murphy said, who knows a lot more than you, Daniel, me and Porky put together yeah. about football, yeah. he said, look at the way the Italians attack. Look at how they are drilled. Mm-hmm. It is very, very obvious that they've been very well coached. Yes. So what it tells you is that if you're Italian yeah. and you're a footballer for Italy, yeah. you yeah. are coached to within an inch of your life yeah. so you know exactly what you're supposed to do. Yeah, but it's like I told you at the start of the show, people like Italy for its food, for its wine, for its beautiful football. Nobody cares about politics in Italy. That's why the country's run like a basket case, you know? And I sometimes yeah, well, I really wonder... don't think it's... We can't call any country a basket uh, case right now. Well, I, I sometimes wonder whether we should be less uh, obsessed about politics in this country. Now, the very nice pictures gone out tonight, I've just noticed. Oh, yeah. uh, we sometimes talk to our correspondent over in uh, the US of A called Mark Donaldson, That's do right. we not? Yes, the very time. And Mark has paid us a visit here at TalkSport Towers. Yeah, I had dinner with him. I right, think yeah. you've had dinner with him and I a did. glass or two of wine. And Mark has taken a, um, a picture of the three of us together and posted it on, uh, I suppose it's his, uh, his Twitter account, it is it? It is certainly his Twitter account, Which yes. is Donaldson ESPN. I look, well partic- I look particularly... Uh, bright and bubbly in it, but then I didn't. I wasn't invited to dinner with you, was I? No, you weren't. Why was well, that? Well, because I've known Mark for a very long time. Uh, in fact, I was once his boss uh, mm-hmm. up in Edinburgh. Uh, we're talking about yes. probably 10, 15 years ago. Yeah, but you've known me a long time as well. Yeah, but, you know... You... So why wasn't I invited to dinner well, with Well, because you wouldn't have fitted in. What do you mean, I wouldn't have fitted wouldn't, in? You wouldn't have fitted in. Fitted because into we were, what? Because we were talking about things that you were not involved in. So, uh, therefore, we were talking I've about... I've been involved in everything. I've been at the core centre of things for 35 years. No, you've been at the centre... Don't tell me. Don't no, tell me I wasn't involved in anything. The only thing you've been at the centre of is your own mm. little world. No, right? I think so. And myself and Mr Donaldson mm. talked about the launch of Talk 107. Oh, well, oh that's fascinating. Now, how long did that last then? Well, we were both involved in it. And so how long did it last? It lasted approximately, I would say, um, four or five years. You managed to close it down within no, within half no, a decade. Actually, no. It was closed down after I was fired. Yes. When I was working for it, it yes. was still actually quite a successful organisation. But they fired you because but, it was so successful, no, yeah? No, they fired me yeah. because they wanted to change the direction of the station. Yeah, and make it because sound thought, good rather than rubbish. No, yeah. not true. Yeah, that's a good change of no, direction. that's now. not true. Mm. If you knew anything about what you were talking about, yeah. you'd understand Well, that, I happen uh, to know what I'm talking about. Maybe, I have been a former Prome Director of you? major national radio really? institutions. And how did that go? It went very well, thank you. But what happened? 
Uh, unfortunately, I was struck down by acute heart failure and had to relinquish my position. I've heard of some reasons I was to get within, out. I was within uh, 36 yeah. hours of death, so would, yeah, you want to make a say, joke of that? Make you, a joke yeah, of that, you know. But would you say that, for example, your your uh, your radio figures were bigger when you were the uh, programme director, or are they bigger now? Oh, they're, they're huge now. Right, because so they're I, bigger I, now. Well, I put the foundations so down. There was nothing there till I came along. So they're better now than they were when you were in charge? There was absolutely nothing there. I laid the foundations yeah. okay. and, and, and growth, organic growth mm. and, and cultural... And artistic growth has happened ever since. I Don't see. worry about that, mate. And how, I'm not worried. And yeah. how long is it since you were programme director here? Ooh, I didn't like to go into that because my life has been an evolving were pattern you not, uh, were of you progressive... Were you not as programme director before the Premier League started? No. No, no, sure? no, no. I'm certain. I was never sacked at all. Really? I was, I was confined to hospital for seven months, <laughs> waiting for a heart attack. It's difficult to do that what? and be prime director what? at the same time. Waiting for a heart attack. Yeah, uh, sorry, for a heart transplant. <laughs> yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. It could, anyway, have been, could have been a heart attack. Anyway, have you seen the time? Because we're out of it already. We're right. going to talk to a very important man called Denver Fowler coming up very shortly. Who's a paleontologist? Yes. Curator of the Dickinson Dinosaur. I haven't Museum. told you. I haven't told you about the parrot yet. The grey parrot at uh, witnessing a. Uh, Court case That's in New true. York. Yeah, you've got to elaborate on that. Yeah, certainly this have. is talk sport. Mm. This is Talk Sport. We are the two mics. We're going to be here uh, not just tomorrow night uh, for the Porky Quiz. Now, what's this nonsense you're talking about about the Porky mm. Quiz and wanting to change the subject? Because, you know, yeah. the independent quiz masters have already been set yeah. the task of doing a Porky Quiz on Iceland and they were already kind of, you know, 24 hours into it. Well, So what is all this nonsense? Well, the thing is, I think it's a bad choice. We thought we were going to beat Iceland, so we thought we were still in the competition uh-huh. and that uh, well, it no, would be relevant. Well, we said it on Monday after yeah. England had already gone out. Yes, yeah, well, that may be the case. I don't know why we chose Iceland. To me, it's, it's rubbish because it's irrelevant. Relevant now. Well, I... are you now saying you don't know enough about Iceland? Are you bottling out of it? No, I'm not at all. It's just that Iceland is no longer relevant. When do Iceland play? They well, Iceland play... are playing France, I think, on Sunday. On Sunday, you yeah. see. So I don't see the point. I think we should do it on Wales because Wales. Wales are playing Wales on Wales Friday. Friday, exactly. Okay. And, well, the qu- and the quiz on Thursday. I can, I can see that there's some logic to that. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, so I think we'll refocus it on Wales, okay? Well, hang on. It's easier said than done. I yes. can't just suddenly refocus it on Wales. I'm now going to have to get in touch with the independent quiz master. Well, that's your problem. And say to them, look, I'm terribly sorry, yeah. but Porky's had a kind of brain freeze no, and decided he wants no. to change the subject. I tell and you now what. he wants to do it instead of on Iceland, he wants yeah. to do it on Wales. No, I'll tell you what he'll do. They might be halfway we'll, through the questions. We'll compartmentalise it down to Welsh pop stars, OK? Welsh pop yes. stars. Yeah, we had continental right. pop stars last week. I did very okay. well on that. Uh, would have done if the questions had been more realistic. Yeah. But uh, there's loads of Welsh pop stars did around. Did you not fail miserably in the Welsh pr- uh, pop star quiz that we did with uh, H- when we were on H and J? Though I don't mind doing it again. Yeah. Do you remember when you did? Uh, you were trying to do the words to uh, uh, to that song. Uh, total song. Eclipse of the Heart. Oh, Total Eclipse of the Heart. Well, that was sort of a. We, you can, know... st- we can do it again. It's not I a think problem. we should do Welsh pop stars. All right, definitely. We can, we can definitely do Welsh pop stars. Yeah, However, oh, that's good. There may, it may mm. well mean. Right, that there's yeah. more, uh, more cost involved. Yes. Um, we don't have a massive budget on this Well, show. I mean, you'll have to sort that out, I'm afraid. Um, and you know. it may well be that we'll have to miss out on a couple of guests or yeah. something in the, in the, yeah. on the show tomorrow. Yeah, good. Well, we don't need guests. I can fill in the gaps, don't can worry. You? Yes, yes, right. yes, 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 yes. OK, so Welsh pop stars it is. Now, I've got yep. a, um, a tweet here from Sharky. Uh, who's Sharky! Har- who's harking back to that bottle of uh, champagne you gave me the other week. OK. Um, for Father's Day, mm-hmm. right, which was a bottle of Rosé Moet, as I recall. Oh, yes, yes. Um, he says, uh, look, uh, if you look at uh, this uh, uh, offer on the Costco website, right. uh, you can get £3 off a bottle of Mum Rosé. Really? Uh, and you can get it for basically uh, £16.99. Well, I don't know. That, that cost me a lot more VAT. than that. Cost me a lot more well, than that. Ever since you bought, provided that uh, champagne yes. to me, yes. people have been sending me these things from Tesco, saying you can get it for thirty-five quid, and you get two for fifty. Absolutely I think miserable you people. It some kind of job lot. No, no, absolutely miserable. People. I got, I got not, it from you... I got it from Sainsbury's. How much do you claim you spent on that? Uh, over forty pounds. Forty. Mm. And you think that's a lot of money for a bottle of champagne? Well, I mean, you why don't you buy me a bottle of Bollinger? You know, I like on, Bollinger. On a, on a Sunday morning, I didn't have any Bollinger. Mm. So look, you, you you you're being so ungrateful about it, and uh, and I'm getting a few. You know, uh, rubbish. I would say unsympathetic uh, notes about it. I'm never going to buy you one again, so just well, forget it. Okay? I mean, I waited t- 20 years for the first one. Yeah, so, exactly. I mean, you know, yeah. I'm going to wait another 20 years for the next well, one. Well, when was the last time no, you bought me a bottle? Well, I buy you presents all the time. No, you don't. No, I you buy don't. you presents all the time. Rubbish. Uh, may I remind you that I gave you a very nice little um, uh, miniature kind of uh, cup 
which you threw uh, on the ground. Yeah, that's I right. Gave you it, a very, was, it was I a, gave you a, very a nice, freebie somebody gave I gave you a nice wooden game that you could play uh, play with. I brought you a can of corned beef hash from America yeah, at great rubbish. personal cost, mm. right? Yeah. Loading down my uh, my hand luggage. And, yeah. And you th- I mean, everything yeah, I give you, yeah. you throw on the ground. Yeah, well, most of it is just uh, literally tat and, uh, and, and you know, just cast-offs and all that kind of rubbish. So mm. I'm not putting up with that. Anyway, listen, we need to talk about more important matters. Yeah, right. I'm trying to tell you about the parrot that's going to be uh, in a murder trial. Oh, yeah, yeah, tell me. Right, prosecuting laws in Michigan are considering whether the squawks of Bud, an African grey, can be used as evidence in the forthcoming murder trial of a uh, Mrs. Duram, D U R. Yeah, not Duran Duran. No. Mrs. Duram, D U R A M. Right. Who is fortunate and who stands accused of killing her husband, Martin, in what police have characterised as murder and attempted suicide. Yeah. Um, they couldn't mistake the fact he was dead because he'd been shot five times. Mm. He had five bullet wounds. So he was definitely murdered. Yeah, found lying on the floor of his bedroom uh, near to his wife who had one gunshot wound but was still breathing. So she tried to shoot herself, but she missed. To cover it. Well, hang on, you're, pre, yeah, you're prejudging the case, surely. Well, I'm prejudging the case, but how it's in know, America. How, how do you know? That? I don't mean that you're in any legal trouble. No. I mean, how do you know that that's what happened? Well, uh, I don't know that. You're happened, surmising that, surely. But, but I've just read you what the prosecuting laws have put forward as the case. Right. They say, they say it, police have characterised it as a murder and attempted suicide, OK? Right. Uh, now, the question of what Bud knew was first raised weeks after Mr Duram's death when the parrot began reciting snatches of what sounded like a domestic dispute between two people. Oh, yeah. Ownership of the bird had passed to Mr Duram's former wife, right? right. Uh, even though he was dead, obviously. Yeah. Uh, and her name, this is very odd well, as well. you mean he was dead because she killed him, though? Yes, that's right, yeah. Well, how did ownership of the parrot pass to her? No, to the wife's sister. Oh, the sister, sorry. Mm. So, the right. wife, so the wife's uh, sister took ownership of the parrot to look after it, right? Mm. Um, and you won't believe what the... Um... <clears throat> no, sorry, Mr Durham's former wife. Former wife? Former wife, yeah. Well, the one that killed him? Well, no, the, the wife is alleged to have killed him. Right. So oh, the... he's got a previous wife? Yes, that's right. And the she parrot's... didn't kill him? No, no. The, well, how the, do we know that, though? Well, because the police... I've just said it... I'll say it for the third time. The police are characterising it as a murder and attempted suicide. Yeah, yeah that's fine. Yes. But why, why, why put the, 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 the current wife in the frame when it might have been somebody else? I mean, how many Columbos have you watched? It might be that well, the, the current wife didn't The kill police him. arrive at the scene yeah. and they find a man dead with five bullet holes in him. Yes. And a woman with a gunshot wound. Yeah. I assume the forensic experts have worked out that all six bullets well, came from the same gun. Well, hang on. I mean, that sounds a bit obvious to me, no, is what I'm saying. No, no, I mean... I mean maybe think she's been framed. Well, she might have been. Utter trash. Just shut up for a minute. Listen, the point of the story is the parrot, right? OK. So the parrot is now in ownership of uh, Mr Drum's former wife, Christina... Now, you won't believe this. Yeah. Christina Keeler. Mm. Isn't that amazing? Some strange amazing. names here. Who said she recognised one of the people the parrot was mimicking. She said, he's using Marty's voice. Right. Marty being the dead man. The dead man, yeah. Uh, she told a local television station. Right. First, she would hear the parrot shout, Get out! Uh, then he had a funny voice, then. Yeah, that's right. All right. <laughs> first, uh, first, he would, <laughs> first, she would hear the parrot shout, Get out! Get out! <laughs> yeah, that's right. it. Then he would mimic another voice, apparently a woman, saying... Where will I go? And then the parrot would say... <laughs> no, you won't believe it. The parrot then says... You won't believe this. The parrot next said... Don't effing shoot! <laughs> oh, dear. This is a very switched-on parrot. It really is. OK. Yeah. So, <laughs> that's amazing. So, uh, so anyway... So, does this parrot, like, continually say this stuff? I presume it uh, does. Yeah, it, it does. It says it over it and does. over again. It does, yeah, it keeps yeah. saying it over and over again. Yeah. So, anyway, the first wife, right, Mrs yeah. Duram... Yeah, Christina. She, yeah, Chris, uh, no, no, Mrs... Uh, oh, yeah, that's right, yeah, that's sorry, Christina. the first wife, Christina Keeler, yeah. 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 <laughs> Christina, Christina Keeler, Christina Keeler. Keeler. Yeah. Right. She well, says... There's Profumo in all of this. She's told police, yeah. I believe with all my heart... That uh, those are the last words of Marty. She's a pirate. (laughs) That's right, yeah. Uh, Mrs Keeler said he was there to see it all happen. She's talking about the parrot now, uh, whose name is Bun, I think, isn't it? Bun. Did I I say it was called Bun? Why didn't she shoot the parrot? Uh, No, Bud. Question of Bud. Bud. Well, because she didn't expect the parrot to have taken all this in, did she? See, that tells me that she hasn't killed the guy and she is not responsible for his murder. Because if you were that cold-blooded, surely you would kill the parrot. 
Because you know the parrot's going to repeat what happened. Well, you don't, do you? You well, really of course don't. You do. Parrots well, repeat words. Wouldn't occur to you. But any, anyway, anyway, to go on, uh, this killer attempted to mm. film the parrot during one of those performances and managed to catch this final line. Okay. Oh, right. Uh, a local television. Obviously, she can't take the parrot to the police and say, "Look, listen to what he's saying." She has to try and record it when he says it in the house and then produce it as evidence. You see. So a local television station, Wood TV, sent a crew to film Wood. the. Yeah, Wood. Wood TV. Literally. Literally. Wood TV. W O O D TV. Must be, you know. W W O TV. No, W O O D Wood TV. I don't know why they call Wood TV. Uh, anyway, uh, so local television station Wood TV sent a crew to film the parrot. Right. They reported that the bird did not perform for the camera. Right. Uh, a fact that seemed likely to diminish any hopes prosecutors might have harboured of the bird <laughs> taking the stand. Maybe they need to waterboard it. Well, yeah, indeed, yeah. However, local attorneys. <laughs> have cast doubt on the idea that the bird squawks could prove useful in the murder trial, yeah. saying it would be impossible to tell if Bud was mimicking heated exchanges yeah. from the moans for a murder or something he'd seen on television. Well, exactly. He could have been watching an episode of Columbo, He could have been, he could have been, yeah, yeah. Right. Except I know, as an expert on Columbo, and I yeah. think I got six out of ten you did in well Columbo. On Columbo. Yes, true. I, I know for a fact there's not one single episode where the victim says, Don't effing shoot! Right. All well, right. it didn't have to be Columbo. And this, this could is, have been something else. He could have been watching, you know, the, yeah. uh, any number of other shows. It's true. NCIS. Could have watched Ironside, maybe? Ironside? Well, Iron, I was talking about something that was made this century. Well, yeah, I'm, could have been I, watching NCIS. I, I, Ironside's uh, been repeated this mo- at the moment on uh, Gold or something, yeah. Well, not on Wood TV, Fa- though. Eh? No, not not, not, not on Wood, wood TV. TV. Anyway. Uh, it's in Ro- the time, by the way. Robert, you don't mind about that. Robert <laughs> Springstead, the prosecuting attorney. <laughs> Spring what? Uh, Springstead. Yeah, there were funny the names in this, in this place. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Robert Springstead, the prosecuting attorney... Everybody's got a hungry heart. Hang on, hang on, shut up a minute. <laughs> for Nuego County in Michigan... Nuego. No weirdo name. Nuego. 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 Yeah. Said the bird squawks had not yet been ruled out. <laughs> What's your problem? <laughs> hey? Had, Nothing. Mm, on, had not on. yet been ruled out, <laughs> right, as potential evidence against no. Mrs Duram, yeah. who was charged with murder early this month and denied bail. He says it is something that we're going to be looking at to determine if it's reliable to use it or if it's information that needs uh, that we need to prosecute Imagine this cross-examining case. the parrot. <laughs> exactly. Well, yeah. Yeah. Ridiculous. Yeah, it could be. Yeah. Now, how about this? Mm. Uh, Woodenhead says the parrot described mm. a killer as a bearded peg leg uh, with a hook for a hand. <laughs> and Scott says, got to love Porky... Uh, he's the only guy that can say enough of that nonsense. Now onto a parrot that's going to be a witness at a murder trial. <laughs> <laughs> that's true, that's true, yeah. This is Talk Sport. Well, we are the two mics. Don't forget Porky Vision coming up a little bit later on, which is uh, one of the best TV reviews. Not just one of the best, probably the best TV review oh, yes. uh, you will ever hear this side of, as we said earlier, Jurassic Park. Indeed. Uh, we're going to talk very shortly about dinosaurs. We've been talking about parrots uh, and their ability to uh, perhaps remember events, be able to be witnesses in murder trials and all of that. Mm. Uh, Denver Fowler's going to be here in a moment, uh, Mr Parry. Uh, yeah. He's a paleontologist uh, from North Dakota. Uh, let me just read you a couple of tweets. Paul says, Porky's impression of a parrot has got me crying with laughter. Uh, Wooden Head says, perhaps the parrot wanted to be with the man's ex-wife, so he forged the will uh, and then killed him I and then framed so. the wife. Uh, Jacob so. says, it's the parrot that killed him and now it's trying to frame the wife. You see, people are not mm. taking this story seriously. No, they're not. And Michael I'm... says, does the parrot want the England job? No, absolutely not. <laughs> but uh, but no, that's because you uh, you know you 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 just um, mocked the story until no. I got to the crucial bit of evidence. The parrot yeah. apparently heard the victim, the husband, say, "Don't f and shoot," right. and uh, and they're trying to capture that now on video or or audio or something yeah, yeah. to present it in court. Right, exactly. Well, how about this yeah. from Tony? He says the usual suspects: Bruce Springstead, Duran Duran, Christine Keeler, yeah. or the Wood Pigeon. Well, I tell you, it's all amazing <laughs> stuff, isn't it? This uh, the it names, is. yeah. Well, let's talk yeah. about dinosaurs because this is a fascinating subject for me and yes. I'm sure for you as well. Yes. Uh, Mr. Denver Fowler, very good morning to you. Welcome. Good morning. Thank yeah, you, good thank morning. You, Denver, for joining us. Thank now, you. Uh, I don't know if you know about this story about the parrot and the murder trial, but, but we, it sort of segues nicely into what we want to talk to you about, which is, of course, that um, 
Basically, uh, discoveries have been made about bone tissue and feathers, uh, almost 100, a year, 100 million years old, uh, which are a di- part of dinosaurs' uh, sort of makeup, but are remarkably similar, more similar than we've ever known, to modern birds. Yeah, so this is a, some really incredible fossils that have just been collected from um, Burma or Myanmar, as it's also known, oh, yeah. uh, down in Southeast Asia. Um, yeah, so about 100 million years old, and some, some, of the, some paleontology discoveries, it's like a new hypothesis or a new theory. This is just two really beautiful, exceptional fossils um, that are showing us in incredible detail um, the feathers that these animals had. And I mean, up until now, and we've always been told, I suppose, that, you know, when the dinosaurs did die out, mm. there were certain species that sort of carried on, and the birds being one of them, really. I mean, what's your theory, or, or your, or your uh, not necessarily theory, but your belief about what happened when the dinosaurs were, were, were killed off? Did they sort of still exist in certain species, or, or was there a jump over time, and what, what actually happened? Um, one of the interesting things about these new specimens is... Um, they belong to a group of birds um, that actually did go extinct at the KT boundary the same time as the dinosaurs. Right. So it's not that all birds sailed through fine. Um, actually, many, many birds did go extinct. And so these belong to a group called the Enantiornithines. And they were a, a quite primitive or basal bird, if you like. Most of them still had teeth. They still had quite large claws on their wings. Um, but they went extinct at the KT, so it's a very good question as to why did many of these primitive birds go extinct along with the dinosaurs, and yet the more derived, the more advanced group of birds seem to have got through. And, um, Demma, do we think this will actually move things on? Because in the business you're in, we tend to move on by minute degrees, don't we? During the whole of your lifetime, you won't be able to... Um, update the evolutionary process between birds and dinosaurs by more than, I don't know, a few years in a few million years. How significant is it? Um, in terms of the finding, I think what, what there'll be more work that's done on these specimens, and it, and it really invites us to uh, to look for more uh, material. Like, so this, this was found two perfectly preserved little wings mm. um, in amber. And what we used to be um, we associate amber with insects in them, just like in the Jurassic Park films. These right. incredibly preserved insects with all the little hairs on their legs and that sort of thing. And these are from yeah, 100 million absolutely. years ago, which is an unfathomable oh. time well, yeah, away. You, I mean, you've seen Jurassic Park, right? No. You haven't seen no, it? No, I haven't seen How it. How can no. you have not seen it? I don't know. Sorry, uh, sorry, Denver. He oh. hasn't seen Jurassic Park, but I mm. mean, every, almost everyone mm. listening has. Yes. Yeah. So that sort of level of detail of preservation, all those fine little details, we now have for these two little bird wings. Mm. So this first paper has, has scanned them, and they found out that all the same feathers, the same types of uh, feathers that we see in modern birds, were already present um, back then, 100 million years ago, right. in these primitive birds. And, and when, you talk about, the, the, when you talk about primitive birds, Denver, mm. are we talking about things of a similar sort of uh, size, scale, to the birds we have now. I mean, obviously, we now have a wonderful variety of birds, you know, everything from a from a small, I don't know, robin redbreast in this country to, to a giant American eagle. Um, were these birds back in 100 million years ago of similar dimensions, or were they bigger? Um, some of them were bigger. I think in terms of flying birds, um, the flying birds probably weren't quite as large as they were today. Um, because the flight capabilities of some of these early birds were st- are still quite debated. We, we don't think they were quite as strong at flying. So the very biggest birds we have today are mostly soarers, gliders. They, they use thermal lifts to get high. Mm. So um, they probably we didn't have a quite as large flying birds, but they had many large ground birds, uh, like we have today, like ostrich sort of size, things like that. Maybe not quite as big as an ostrich, but, you know, large birds. Right. And, and what we're being told is that the lead uh, sort of author of the study, mm. uh, Dr. Jing Lida, says that the tiny birds that they believe existed uh, lived in trees but, but almost came out of the egg, if they did indeed come out of an egg, pretty much ready to fly straight away. Uh, and so they were quite well developed. What, what does that tell us about how they could not have survived whatever it was that killed the dinosaurs? Well, I think that's it's one of the most interesting parts of the study and it kind of dovetails, if you will, um, with, with some of the research that I'm doing, um, there are we call that super precocial young that basically right. they're ready to go straight from the egg. Yeah. Um, 
there are there are some birds in Australia that are like that. They're, you know, little, um, I don't know what it's called now. It's called something turkeys, but they're not related to turkeys. Mm. But they can fly basically straight out of the egg almost. Right. Um, what does that tell us? It, it tells us that there might be something about that. There might be something about their ability to be super precocial straight out of the egg. That, is that linked in with their ability to survive, or is that linked in with... Um, Perhaps the reason why they went extinct at the boundary. I, I personally think that it's almost like little dinosaurs. Um, when dinosaurs hatched, we think that they were probably able to run around as well. So perhaps these primitive birds were actually more similar to their dinosaurian ancestors right. than the really derived birds that we right. have today. Okay. Mm-hmm. And when so do you see a baby bird, you know? It, yeah. And when, and when do you think Denver will be able to be more definitive about? Um, you know, precisely when the dinosaurs died out, precisely what happened to them and why birds are the only kind of survivors, if you like. I mean, why nobody, you know, no other species... Well, has, we know all that already, don't no, we? No, we don't know of that. Of course we do. Of course oh, we well, do. Well, you tell me then. Well, no, I mean... These, why don't you tell me? No, guys like Denver... So they, tell me why the dinosaurs these, died out. These paleontologists, yeah. they know as much as we can know about it. All right, so you tell me when the dinosaurs died. Then. No, no, I'm not going to, because because Denver knows all that. And what I'm saying is you're asking a question yeah, you don't which know. scientists already know the no. answer to. Denver, is that right? Do your scientists already know the answer to all of that? Uh, well, uh, we, we don't always have answers. We, we have lots of new questions. Yeah, exactly. We have more exactly. information. We have a good date. I mean, the most recent date for when it happened right. was 66 million years ago right. on the dot. So, what do you think about what do you think about ago? this parrot being involved in a murder case? <laughs> I saw the headline. Yeah. I haven't got around to reading the story right. yet. It's, it's kind of like a comic book come true, isn't it? It's, it's weird, weird, isn't it? It certainly is. Yeah. Anyway, right. well, listen, very good. Thanks, Denver. Yeah, good well, to hear well, from you. Don't be so dismissive. Sorry? I'm, I'm not finished dismissive. with him, yeah? Sorry? Oh, Denver, yeah, thank you very yeah. much. Thanks yeah. very much for joining us, Denver. We'll talk to you mm. again soon. Um, mm. And uh, keep looking for that amber, that's, that's what right. I would say. Yeah. Denver Fowler there, dinosaur paleontologist, yeah. or just basic paleontologist, really. Yeah. Who pays uh, these guys? What? Who pays them? Well, he works for the uh, Dinosaur Museum in North Dakota. And who founds that? Well, I think it's funded that? by any number of people. Well, they're all a waste why, of time. Why, why is it a waste of time? Because we know all of them. No, you see, the that... trouble with you is, is yeah. that you don't recognise or appreciate knowledge. No, I do. You think, you think, I do, but this, is, think, this is useless no, knowledge. You think that you've learned everything you want to learn. Well, nobody you know needs my father to used know. To say, what? You know what my father used to say? What do you suppose Anyone say? Uh, who, who involves themselves... Crazy old in, father, yeah. Uh, well, yeah. you say that. Yeah, yeah. Someone from dementia. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much for reminding me. Well, that was at people. the end of his life. He was, yeah. he was, he was crazy. He was not crazy before in, that. In the middle years no, of his life when I knew from him. dementia. Yeah, well, right? I'm very sorry about and that. And Alzheimer's yeah. disease. You're not sorry at all. Of course I am. You make fun of him at every possible opportunity. The point is, right, that, you know, he said if you if you become a teacher, you're basically giving up learning. You are the same person. You have decided you know everything you want to know. No. And you're not interested in learning no, anything else. No, I haven't. I, I just thought... The of the matter is, is you're I just an ignoramus. Denver, you're an ignoramus. No, no, Denver was droning on there about things that I've already been told about. You know, the dinosaurs were around 100 million years ago. Yeah. A meteorite probably crashed no, into you the don't earth know and killed happened. them. You don't know that. And it left a few little birds, and, and now we're trying to, you know, find a few more little birds' wings to find out. I mean, who cares? Uh-huh. Who cares? How's it going to improve the world? As because, I keep saying to these people, whoever funds the this institute where Denver works should yeah. give the money to try to find a cure for cancer because this is a complete waste of time. Absolutely Don't you rubbish. understand that? Now, how about this from Adrian? He says, Wood TV could be Ooh. a porky company. Hashtag <laughs> Plank. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, Michael says, does the parrot, want, well, does the parrot want the England job? Mm. We call uh, it Plank Broadcasting. No, you um, could do, yeah. You've um, already tried that, though, haven't you? No, not at all. The, um, You've seen the time, by the way. The, the, don't worry about the time. There's, there's other reports coming in that, um, oh, David Beckham's interested in the job and all that kind of total rubbish. Utter nonsense. What? Nonsense. What's nonsense? David Beckham won in the England job. You might as well give him the job. Complete nonsense. I mean, you might as well give the job to, to you know, Thomas the Tank Engine. Beckham's worth about 200 million quid. Why would he take that job? Because he Waste doesn't need... Time. Precisely because he doesn't need the money. Exactly. He should do it for nothing. And he hasn't got the time. How about that? This is Talk Sport. UEFA Euro 2016 France on Talk Sport with Tool Station. Buy online or in over 220 local branches nationwide. There when you need it. Welcome back to France, where today it's Portugal v Poland. And the Polish shouldn't be at all worried by any Ronaldo free kicks. After all, they've got plenty of experience of building walls. Anyway, for this and one match every day at Euro 2016, bet £20 on a team to win with Paddy Power and we'll give you a £5 free bet for every goal they score in that match. Vive la bande, Paddy Power, you're welcome. 
Excludes in-shop bets. Applies to first £20 plus pre-match single. Own goals and penalty shootouts don't count. Free bets valid on football for 48 hours. TNCs apply. 18 plus gamblerware.co.uk Whether you're saving up for a new home or you've got a wedding to pay for, the money you're putting aside is perfectly safe. Protected by the FSCS up to £75,000 should anything happen to your bank, building society or credit union. It's completely automatic, free of charge, and you'll get your money back within seven days. You'll probably never need us, but it's good to know we're here. Such FSCS protected. All of us at QuickFit would like to say a big thank you, so with each promotional tyre you buy, we'll give you a spin of Jaffa's Wheel, where you could win 25% off aircon recharge, a free 40-point brake check, 20% off your service and much more. So get down to your local QuickFit today. QuickFit, it's all about the service. The two mics simulcast across the UK on Talk Sport and Talk Radio. Where is my mind? Where is my mind? Where is my mind? Talk Crick says this. Ask the dinosaur expert why human footprint, footprints have been found next to fossilised dinosaur tracks. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, that's one of those uh, sort of conspiracy theories, isn't it, on the old internet? Is it? Uh, as to why time that travel. Have been the case. Yeah, either time travel yeah. or uh, whether dinosaurs actually around a lot uh, uh, yeah. more modern uh, times than we thought. Yes. Or indeed where humans uh, were around before we actually think they were. Yeah. Adrian says this. Has the plank got shares in Wood TV? Wood Sounds TV. like one of his enterprises. Yeah, well... Uh, yeah, well, I'm not averse to uh, looking at things like that. You know, as you as you uh, tried to yeah. men- allude to the fact that, uh, of course, I've uh, I've invested and investigated uh, internet broadcasting. <laughs> it's, it's the future. How did that it's go? The future. Huh? How did that go? Uh, well, you know, and they went bankrupt, didn't they? No, 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 no. You have to understand. You have to understand that you know, unless there's pioneers like difficult, me, yeah, difficult, uh, difficult business circumstances. Uh, and, and unless there's uh, pioneers like me, you don't yeah. get anywhere. Now, listen, I want to talk to you about a bloke called right, yeah. go on. Uh, a chap called Dave Brewer. Dave Brewer. <laughs> yeah, I know. Does he make beer. Another weird name. No, guess well, what? Why is Dave Brewer not a weird name? It's a perfectly normal name. B R E W E R. It's a perfectly normal name. Brewer. Hey, by the way, funny you should say. Uh, you never get yeah, Brewer's talking. droop. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> That's rather rude thing to say, man. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. wouldn't want to be double barrel, yeah. would you? Yeah. Uh, no. Anyway, no, I mm. mean, have you ever been a member of the Freemasons? No. Uh, do you ever meet anyone from the Freemasons? Well, you don't know, do you? Because they don't tell you. They don't tell well, you. Yeah, but I mean, you're not suspected. Not so, really. I mean, it's supposed to be, isn't it supposed to be senior police officers, judges, all that kind of stuff? Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, when I was in uh, uh, Sussex at the weekend, yes. there was one of these, um, you know, fairs going on. It was like right. a big fun weekend yep. and stuff. And there yep. was stuff going on in the recreation ground, sure. stuff going on down the street. Sure. There's a Freemasons Hall, and they had a big sign outside. Yes. Literally like... Join the know, Freemasons. Well, no, just kind of, do you want to know what Freemasonry is all about? Stop here and mm. we'll tell you. Mm. And uh, there were these guys standing outside, and all these banners, yeah. saying, what is Freemasonry? Come in and have a chat. Right. Now, that's quite I interesting, didn't do that. It. Because what you're saying is you thought it was more of a secret society than well, that. Well, no, not really. But, yeah. I mean, people have said that over the years. I mean, I've actually given a talk to a Freemasons oh, group I see. Yeah. of people. Yeah. Um, and who were completely normal. Well, I uh, funny you say that, well, because one, one, of the, uh, no, one of the towns that I sometimes... Come quite a nice thing with women, actually. Oh, really? Oh, that's yeah. good, yeah. One of the towns I sometimes have to visit in Surrey, you know, in the pursuit of business, um, next to the post office, yeah. there's a big building, and I always wondered what it was. And yeah. when I walked past it, there's right. a plaque on the front saying Freemasons Hall. Oh, yeah. And I thought, oh, I thought they were a secret organisation. No, they're think not. That, I didn't think no, they... But the, re- actually, yeah. the reason I mentioned it is because mm. where, names like Brewer right. and Miller... Uh, and Farmer. Yes, that's right, yeah. These are all names that came yeah. up through the kind of trade. Sure. Right? And many of whom would have been Freemasons. Yeah, but I saw a group of them once, you know, Those assembling at the hall, Freemasons, oh, yeah. and they do all look like undertakers. I mean, there's no that's, doubt about it. And they, you're frightened of them, aren't you? Uh, yeah, I am, yeah. In fact, funny enough, I left a pub last week when uh, an undertaker came in. I thought, that man's got the aura of death about I him. imagine you're followed around by quite a few undertakers. Well, uh, well uh, <laughs> that's a bit harsh. But Just no, in case you he came in, it. and I recognised him because he had, you know, he had pinstripe like uh, trousers on and uh, like a well, you morning might be go- jacket you might be and all going that. To a wedding. No, 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 no. I asked somebody who he was, and they said, "Oh, he, the guy." Oh, so yeah. I just left. Because... Actually, I've, funny enough, I've thought of you a couple of times. I've passed. I would say in the last two weeks, yeah, I've passed four 
hearses with coffins in. And normally, when you pass them, yeah. they've got nothing in them. That's right. But all the four of them had, had a, uh, you know... A, Do you know I saw the other a day? A in a box. I was walk, out walking the other day. I had to yeah. walk down... To, it wasn't, uh, I wasn't across the downs. It was urban walking. And urban. I, had to, I had to pass... Uh, I had to go to B&Q to get a new screw for my uh, stand-up <laughs> lamp because it fell over. <laughs> so I thought you went to B&Q the other day. I did. To so, get some new screws for something, didn't you? Did you get the yeah, wrong screws? Yeah, I did. Got the wrong screws. Didn't fit. I went back to change them. But anyway, the, the point of my story is... How much of your life do you... No, which is why no, you waste on, so much on. of your life. No, I don't waste You've my life. You've been to B&Q's twice now. Yeah, yeah, that's right, yeah. Do you ever ask the old people where, where the stuff is? Which old people? Well, they hire old people. Yeah, they do. Kids. Yeah, yeah, they're very helpful. Yeah, yeah. yeah except they didn't have the right screw, so yeah. I've got to wait until they get it in. Never ask anyway, old person for a screw. Anyway, the story is I have to walk past a complex, which yeah. is, it's it's both an undertaker's and a chapel of rest. Yeah, one and, stop shopping. Oh, it's terrible, <laughs> and and a dingy little building, and I didn't know what the dingy building was, but do you know what happened. Uh, the door flew open in this dingy building. and two, Flew open? Yeah, flew open. And two men who looked like they'd just been dug up. You no. know what I mean? <laughs> I'm not joking. You know, they were very callow-looking chaps. Well, it's uh, not good if you're in the undertaking business to look too cheery. D- no, to be honest, it was just like that. They, they honestly looked like they'd lived in the dark the for about past 15 years. And, and, and they came out, and do you know what they were doing? What? They were carrying coffins under one arm. So clearly there was nothing in the coffins, oh, I unless see. they were very, very strong, you know. Or very light coffins. Very light coffins, and they were sticking them in the back of a van. Now, yeah. I just mean a van. I don't mean, I don't mean you know, like a, a, a black uh, hearse. private ambulance or hearse. hearse. Yeah. And, you know, they have, they have the private ambulances right. and all that kind and of stuff. And were they different hues, these coffins? Because some of them are oak, some of them are mahogany. No, you know. do you know what they are? Do you know what they are? The basic I, boxes? Yeah, no, I found out later they're, they're the sort of coffins which you can order the very cheapest for cremations because they, you know, they're going to get burnt anyway, so you yeah. don't spend any money on them. You know what I mean? Although I've said this to you before, yeah, I've been told that sometimes when the cremation process goes on, yes, they actually empty the the the, the box, yeah, and, and resell it. Well, I don't know how they do that because and any every cremation I've been to, mm. literally the music starts, yeah. the terrible music, and then what the, terrible music? You know that. <laughs> What are you laughing at? That's what it sounds like. <laughs> it's not Doctor Five sitting well, there on the old piano and well, the organ. Is no, it? no, no. But it's you can have any music. No, it's always oh, horrible. The last one I went to, they were playing a Beatles song. Oh no! As, it's, as the old uh, no. coffee went through the flames. No, it's funeral music, <laughs> and uh, and it rolls back, and then the curtains close, yeah. and then you 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 visibly hear this boof. And that's the firing of the yeah. of the jets, which are about a thousand degrees centigrade. Right. So they have to they'd have to get him out pretty damn quick and rescue right. the wooden box because it would be burned. Anyway, look, I don't know how I'm talking about this. Point Why is, aren't we talking about it? Well, you started. No, you're because about this guy called Brewer. Yeah, Brewer. Now this guy yeah. is got now this this man. <laughs> sorry, what's this? <laughs> oh yeah, the, the march. funeral march. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, now, now the point is, this guy will be roundly mocked everywhere. Yeah, right. Because his name is Dave Rowe, he's 69, right? Right, OK. And he has become the first person in Britain uh-huh. to visit every one of Britain's 2,552 railway stations. What? And he's, he's probably got a, a publishing deal to uh, feature two well, I hope, I hope the 200 on, best. I hope none of them are on the Southern Network, because he's only got well, a train from any of them. He's visited some that are only used, like, once a week and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, that'll, that'll, he's, be, that'll he, be southern. He's a retired record shop owner from Charlie and Lancashire. Uh-huh. I like Charlie and Lancashire. I like Lancashire. Uh, and he spent ten years travelling the rail network and visited every station. His favourite stations are Dolo in Wales. Dolo? Dolo. D-O-L-A-U. Dolo. Dolo. Yeah. Dolo. Dolo. Delau, uh, isn't it? Delau in Welsh. I think it'll be... I mean, you're supposed to be a knowledgeable Welsh speaker. That's right, I am. Have you been to has Delau? He driven, has he driven to these places? Or no, he's gone, no he's gone on trains. He's gone sure? on trains. Definitely, definitely. And the other one is Chatill in Northumberland. Now, that bit might be near my retirement home, OK? Might be. Yeah. Well, how Ch- do you know? Well, because it's such a small place. It's got one station. I've never heard of it, but, I mean, oh. you know, Northumberland is... Oh, Northumberland's quite a big county. It is a big county. It goes up to the borders. Why, does, why, why did he choose those as his favourites? Uh, he said, he sa- I don't know, it, 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 I suppose it'll be explained in his book. Uh, well, you're supposed to be telling us the story. No, no, I'm telling you, this guy, you see, now this guy will be sort of uh, barracked, uh, don't I mean barracked, I mean barracked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, barracked. <laughs> and, 
and mocked. Correct. Yeah, yeah, hang on. And mocked and derided as a, what do they call, as a... a an anorak. An anorak, yeah, you know. A plague. Uh, as a super sort of um, train Nerd. spotter, you yeah, know what I mean? A geek. But you see, I admire guys like him. Because that man's got a purpose in life. He says, I'm going to visit every station in the country. And how many has he got to so far? Uh, I've just told you, 2,552. Oh, well, yeah, but how many is that, as a percentage of the number every of Every one. He's been to he's every been one. To every this station. is exactly what I'm trying to tell you. You're not taking it in, are you? Well, you're not explaining he, it very well. He has been to every railway station in the country, 2,552. OK. Now... Does that include Northern Ireland? No, it does not. It includes... Well, it's not, well so he's not been to every... Has he been to every one in England, then? It, it, sorry, it is in Northern Ireland. I beg your pardon, it is. It's, it's, what uh, are you talking about? I do know what I'm talking about. Great in Northern Ireland. Now, Scotland? Yes, it includes Scotland. Does it? Yes, it's Britain's. It's Britain's right. station, 2,552. Now, then, what I can tell you is this. A brown... A... Sorry, what's your problem? <laughs> what's your problem? Hmm? Well, I've just got a couple of tweets here uh, from people yeah. asking what the hell are you talking about? I'm talking about, I'm talking about old Dave Brewer, 69, mm. visited every one of the 2,550 yeah. row stations and you think in this country. A, and you think he's a great now, guy? Eh? And you think he's a great guy? I do, I think he's a great guy because he had a mission in life and he just stuck with it and did it, so right. good for him. Now, so what what's he going to do now? Hey, eh? What's he going to do well, now? I don't know, he's gonna retired. Bus stop what I was going to say to you is, Idiot. you can bet your life within a few weeks as yeah. the football season starts, we'll get a number of people who will be contacting us, please sponsor us, please support us. Oh, what are you doing? Yeah. We're going to all 92 uh, football yeah. club grounds in the country. Yeah. It happens every year. Right. Same bunch of bores go out and oh. do it. Oh, so you yeah. don't, you don't yeah. approve of that? Well, I don't because... Uh, you Why know, do you call them bores? Well, because, you know, they're, oh, you know, we're rushing around here, we're driving here, we're driving all that. This guy had a mission in life on something completely different. He completed it. I'm one of his uh, his supporters. Really? And I, sure, he's delighted. And I think people like him should be Is applauded. He Is he married? This guy? I have no idea. I bet he isn't. I have no idea. I bet he's not. They should be applauded for their individuality. That's what I'm saying. Really? Okay. What a complete and utter waste of time no, that was. No, that's very interesting. How that. about this from Scott? He says, MG, you're quite right. Knowledge is king. Porky's mm. a man who has given up learning. Can't even get Netflix working. Yeah, well, I will get Netflix working. Don't worry about very that. But I just, I just don't need to know. About 100 million years ago, a little bird has been found as a fossil and gives us uh, yet more non-information about the dinosaurs. How about just Kevin? tell us how the dinosaurs were wiped out, will you? Well, you said you knew that. And the, well, well, you said everybody knew it. Everybody does know. I asked him that question. He said, actually, we got more questions than answers. Meter hit the earth. What else could have happened? What did? What else could have happened? A meter. A meter hit the earth. A meter of what? Meteor, you a idiot. Meteor of fish. Uh, how about this from Kevin? Porky moving, uh, moaning on about Denver, droning on about things you already knew. Talk about pot, kettle and black. Yeah, I don't know. Hey, eh? And uh, Richard says, Porky has the brain of a stegosaurus. But he's not quite as attractive. Is that a compliment? Uh, yes, no, it is in your case. Okay. This is Talk Sport. This is Talk Sport. We are the two mics coming up in the next hour. It is, of course, a porky vision. Uh, we will be uh, telling uh, uh, you exactly what you should have been watching uh, if you missed it. Uh, porky will be telling you exactly what he's been watching. Aaron says this. Uh, porky, why don't you tell us about the time you watched paint dry next? <laughs> oh. <laughs> one from, uh, uh, from Leach who says, mm. ancient Tao philosophical quote about uh, apt for Porky. Those who know it do not speak about it. Those who speak about it do not know it. Mm. How about that? What's that, what's that load of rubbish? Well, it's mm. some ancient Tao philosophy. Uh, and one from uh, Galley who says, has Dave Brewery ever kissed a girl? It's a good question. Who? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> The guy that you've just been talking about for the oh, last ten right, minutes. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, got it, yeah. Dave Brewer's droop. Oh, yeah, I see. Has yeah, he ever yeah. kissed a girl? Well, I see, uh, you see how people are getting all mocking and all that kind of stuff. Why can't people take this thing seriously? Because... So, so a guy who goes off on an individual mission, so I'm going to visit every... Uh, uh, train station in the country. Did you ever get fined for not having a ticket? You, you should. What, um, what you should do is you should admire guys like that who, who are single of mind yeah, do, and purpose, yeah. and I want to do that sort of thing. Instead mm. of which, you know, all all the, the time, by the way, you know, all the minuscule brains just mock. Yeah. This is Talk Sport. Uh, there will be a podcast coming out a little bit later on. David says yes. David Beckham is a great shout for England manager with Hoddle and Terry as his backroom staff. I presume you mean Steve. 
rather than Terry, yeah. doesn't he? Yeah. Uh, and David, another David says, might have to employ an archaeologist to find grounds where England's last won a game. Yes. Which is actually quite good. Yes. Uh, and uh, Nicholas says, I'm a cabbie in Liverpool, picked up a Freemason last week, mm-hmm. and he told me that they are behind the lottery and they give the most charity uh, to the UK. Is that right? Yeah. That's what he says. Um, that's, uh, that's very interesting. Yeah. You know they still have this uh, black ball, white ball thing, don't hey? you? What? They have a... Uh, they... Well, when you actually get blackballed, yeah, as it that's, were. Yeah, that's right. That's yeah, where the black do, ball came from. They used to do that thing in golf clubs as well, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, the, because this is undercover. You know, you get like this... Yeah, it's like uh, a secret ballot. It's a secret ballot, yeah. but you, what happens is, you you know, you sit around the table, it's got, like, the table's got a cloth on it, yeah. and the box is passed around under the cloth. And uh, nobody knows whether you're putting in a white ball or a black ball. Yes. Now, if the vote, the vote has to be unanimous, so if there's 20 people around the table and there's only one black ball in the box, mm. it means you've been blackballed. You're out. Yes. Do you realise that? I don't know if they do that anymore. Yeah, they do. I'm not sure. Oh, I'm sure they I'm do. I'm not sure. I'm now, pro- how about this one from yeah. Liam? He says, maybe not all UK train mm. stations, but I bet Porky's been to most of the ones that have weather spoons. Uh, well, I didn't know that railway stations had weather spoons. I mean, they do sometimes. Well, they sometimes. have quite a lot of weather spoons near railway stations. They, they do sometimes indeed, yeah. but... Uh, um, but whether or not, you know, uh, I'd have been um, frequenting one of them as a patron is up for question. Yeah, no, indeed. When was the last time you were in a weather spoon, then? Uh, it was a couple of weeks ago. Really? Definitely a couple That's of weeks ago. That's quite a long time for you, Yeah, yeah, it? yeah. It's mostly when I'm down on the coast, you see, um, rather than uh, well, when I'm in Stockbroker stock Belt, because there aren't a lot of them in Stockbroker Belt for what? obvious reasons. What? Why for obvious reasons? Well, because stockbrokers don't go to weather spoons. Why not? Well, because they prefer places that are, you know, rather more expensive. Uh-huh. It, uh, you know, mildly, so to speak. Yeah, OK. You know what I mean? I'll take your word for it. Yeah, yeah. Now, are you fully yeah. prepared for your um, a Porky Vision a little bit later on in this hour? Oh, I think so. Uh-huh. I think so. You really? know, there's a number of uh, issues which I want to address right. and, and uh, get to. OK. Unlocking the cage. And I don't know if I've told you about that, have I? No. That was the one about freeing the uh, all the monkeys in the world and all oh, that yeah. kind of stuff, you know. But I okay. think I've done that already, right. so I think we'll move on to something else. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. Now, yeah. did you see the announcement from PSG today? No. What was that? Uh, they've got a new manager. Uh, PSG, have PSG, they? PSG, yeah? Paris Saint-Germain. Yeah, does anybody care? Uh, well, yeah, of course they do. Why? Because Paris Saint-Germain yeah. uh, have been like Manchester City over the course of the last few years oh, yes. with their new owners from the Middle East, mm-hmm. uh, from Qatar specifically, trying to kind of uh, mm. emerge as the new sort of European power. I see. And Manchester City yes. did much better than they'd yes. done before, did they not, in the yes. Champions League? Yes. Got themselves all the way into, what, the semi-final, was it? Yeah, PSG was. PSG was only going to be exciting if Jose Mourinho went there as manager, well, wasn't I would, it, really? Well, I would beg to differ, mm. because the guy that they've hired to replace Laurent Blanc, who, by the way, is also yeah. being mentioned in passing... Uh, as a possible future England coach, right? Oh, really? Lauren Blanc, well, even yeah. though he was sacked by PSG. Yes. Well, that yes. makes sense, doesn't it? Now, we're going to have yeah. this guy called Unai Emery. Oh, yes. Remember him? No. You don't remember Unai Emery? Unai Emery. I, see, I thought you would, because we used Who's to work he? with a guy called Emery. Oh, David Emery. David Emery. Yeah, Dave's still yeah. going, by the way. And I was still thought, producing uh, his own newspapers. The Football the, League thing. The, yeah, the Football League and the non-league paper yeah. down in Wimbledon. OK. Mm. So Unai Emery is the guy who was the manager of Sevilla. Oh, yes. Who won, of course, yes, that's the third right. of course Europa was, yeah. League in a row. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's thought to be very much a coming power. Mm. So I think you should watch this space. I think you should watch PSG this year. Yeah, well. I think they'll be very good. Maybe I will. I want to talk to you about uh, a, a tragic story involving a dog, because, of course, you've got a dog. I have indeed. And dog forms a big part of your uh, your family life. That's correct. Um, now, the problem is, this dog, right, is at a dog's trust uh, place. Are you saying he's like a rescue dog or something? Um... Well, what is there? Now, it's, uh, believe it or not... Dog, he's, doing, he's at a dog's home, right? Yeah, he's at a dog's home, but I became aware of it because the dog's home borders uh, Harefield Hospital, where I'm still an outpatient, OK? Right, right. So, so are, this... you, are you due to go back there any time soon? Oh, yes, yes, I keep in constant touch. Don't worry about that. Well, yeah, but, I mean, you go every year or something, right? Well, I don't like to talk about my medical condition, you? you know what I mean? But, well, I've uh, got the letter from Dr Banner. Yes, you have, yes, yes, so don't worry about that. Mm. Right, now then, um, so the dog's name is Storm, OK? Storm? Yeah. Right, and sounds like Gladiator. No, it's, uh, it's a Staffordshire Bull Terrier, okay. but it's not a Staffy aggressive, it's a very friendly dog. Well, people who own Staffies always yeah. say, you know, it's really wrong for people to, to, yes. to kind of label yes. them as dangerous dogs, yes. because they're only dangerous dogs if they're owned by irresponsible people, which I'm sure is yeah. true. Yeah. But uh, unfortunately, a lot of irresponsible people tend to own them. It, it's absolutely true. But uh, anyway, look, um, Storm is in this dog's home. Yeah. And it says it's a very friendly little dog, uh, and, and it wants to be placed with a family uh, with children over 11. And uh, the big problem is 
that unfortunately Storm got a an infection hmm. in his eardrum. Did he? And the eardrum had to be removed. His eardrum? Yes. How yes. did he remove an eardrum? Well, I don't know, but they did. They took it out. Yeah. Now, that meant... So that he's deaf in one ear? He's deaf in one ear, and because he's deaf in one ear, Storm... Dogs can hear themselves bark, you know that, don't you? Well, they can hear everything. Well, that's right, yeah, but they, they can... They can also hear yeah. themselves bark. Yes, they can hear themselves bark. I mean, it's a bit like you saying, mm. you know, uh, my hearing is so good, I yeah. can hear myself talk. Well, it's the same sort of thing. Yeah. But the problem is, because Storm has only got one eardrum, yeah. he barks twice as loud as any normal dog. Does he not only just hear it in mono? Well, I assume so. He's only got one ear. Yes, oh, yeah, but, but between mono and stereo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he but he barks twice as loud. Why? Now, now the hey. Why? Because he's only got one ear. That doesn't make any sense. It does. No. It does. He barks twice as he loud hear, because he can't no. gauge the you sound of his no. bark. You can't hear twice as well or twice as loud. Yes, you can. Just because you've got two ears. Yes, you can. If you've got one ear. You hear just as well. Um, it the dogs trust staff. Because I've 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 researched this after I was told about it by somebody at uh, Harefield. Oh yeah. Uh, say that, that it's going to be difficult to rehome uh, Storm. Yeah. Um, because the eardrum was removed following infection. Yeah. Now um, what's happened is they say, and it's a she, it's a she dog. Right. Uh, she is by far the loudest barking dog in our kennels uh-huh. by a mile. Right. It's going to make it a challenge to rehome her, which is a shame. She's a fantastic dog who would make a super pet. Right. Uh, I always say to people who come along and are looking to who's, who's I. Uh, sorry, this is um, Richard Moore, who's the oh. centre manager, oh, right. who I got some a missive from, a missive, a message. Yeah, okay. um, he says um, uh, he says I when people come along and look at Storm yeah. and say they want a doctor, I also I also always say jokingly to them. Do you own a pair of earmuffs? <laughs> <laughs> and they look quite mystified, you yeah. know. But I mean, the point is because uh, Storm is partially deaf. Right. Um, Why don't they give it to a deaf person? Uh, well, I think a deaf person might have a deaf dog if he's a, a, not, not a deaf dog, <laughs> a, 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 a dog, you know, like you know, like a dog for the blind. There's dogs for the deaf, aren't there? Are there? Yeah, there are. What the do dog, they do? Well, they help just like dogs for the blind do. Well, what do they do though? They're trained to to do what? Well, to warn them of things that are happening that they can't hear about. So right. if you're out walking mm. and you hear some nutter on a mo- <laughs> if you're out walking and some guy, how's he going to warn them? <laughs> Well, he, he, he jumps. He jumps up at them. If you look, if you were walking the street, yeah. and you're deaf, right, and some some guy had mounted the pavement on a motorbike yeah. and was hurt enough yeah. behind at you, forty miles an hour. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you're pretty much gone then, aren't you? No, you're you done. wouldn't be able to hear it. But your dog would. The dog's dead as well, probably. No, your dog would push you out of the way. <laughs> well, that's that's what they're there for. I don't know why you find all this funny. Yeah. You know. It's not uh, funny to be deaf, you know, no, and, uh, and, and have to rely on a dog. Well, usually a lot of shouting. Have you got one no. uh, one ear the drum that's not working very well? No. the The thing with Storm is, yeah. she, she she woof woofs <laughs> twice twice as loud. Oh, one right? ear from O'Hara. So no, no. B- what? Borky's barking mad. <laughs> Honest to God, sometimes what I try to do is help. You know, I try to sort these situations out. Right. You know, I'm trying to I'm trying to publicise the um, position regarding Storm. Yeah. In the hope that somebody might find why, her and adopt her. Yeah. Why don't you adopt her? Well, because I can't keep a dog in a penthouse. It's not fair. No. Now it says um, Storm woofs twice as loud because You've with only yes, yeah, with only one ear, she likes to hear herself. And uh, she, you know, it's called self-communication. Really? She has to sort of um, be able to be aware of what sort of noise she's making. Right. But she's a very loud dog. Anyway, look, I'm not going to tell you more about this because, <laughs> you know, you can't seem to... I can't seem to tell you anything about animals without you finding it, you know, hilariously well, funny. Because I don't think you're explaining it very well. I was explain. I've explained it perfectly. Yeah, look, somebody sent out a tweet here that says, mm. Spot on, mate, Porky, dogsforthedeaf.org. Yes, that's right. Here. That's right. There's a whole website dedicated to them. Exactly. It's exactly what I'm saying. It you know, says, that... rescuing professionally trained dogs to assist Ooh. people enhance lives and provide greater independence is what Dogs for the Deaf is all about. Exactly. I but knew that. it doesn't that, say how they do it. Well, they, I, I've just explained to you they're doing exactly the same way as a dog for the In the United mind. States. Well, they've got, we've certainly got them in this country. Yeah, but it doesn't not... say what they do. Well, for instance, at home, they can, they can alert... Uh, a home owner or yeah. a householder right. that the phone's ringing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
what, what's your problem? I mean, because that's it's not perfectly because, normal. Well, don't you remember the Not the Nine O'Clock News sketch where the guy no. invented the, the phone for the deaf? No. And it had this great big red light on it. Right. And Rowan Atkinson was the guy who was deaf. I see. And the big red light started flashing. Yes. And he went over to the phone mm. and picked it up mm. and went, Hello? But, of course, he couldn't hear who was on the other end. No, well, that's <laughs> a problem, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, but you see, I'm sorry, you don't seem to have much uh, sympathy for people who are less advantaged than you. You know, it's true. Yeah. Really. Anyway, really. we're out of time, luckily. Um, if anyone's got any ideas what dogs for the deaf do, mm. uh, by all means, let us know. Uh, coming up, uh, we're going to be doing uh, Porky Vision, of course, which is uh, not for the deaf. Yep. Uh, unless, of course, uh, you can watch TV uh, with uh, all sorts of aids to hear the volume. This is Talk Sport. We're going to do listography as well. Mm. Who let the dogs out? <gasps> This is Talk Sport. We are the two mics. Coming up uh, in a little while, Porky Vision is going to be here, of course. We've got to think about listography, so I want you to uh, yes. put your listography hat on and we'll uh, go through some of the suggestions uh, that we've got here already. And I think uh, we should thank Liz for her listography... Um, last night. Uh, ...suggestion yeah. last night. Hers was the party one, That's right. It? Three best yeah. parties you've been to, yeah. Chazza says this. Dogs are trained to respond to the doorbell knock, uh, smoke alarms, alarm clocks... Well, there you go. Uh, ...and telephones, there you name go. calling, all that you? sort of thing. All you can yeah, do yeah, is yeah. sit there and mock. I mean, no, it's ridiculous. Totally ridiculous. No, it's not, what's ridiculous? What is ridiculous? It is totally ridiculous. What is it is? What, what's the well, it? And the it's idea totally that, ridiculous. The idea that, that you know, a dog tells you when the phone is ringing. Yeah. If you're not able to hear anything, you should already have a phone uh, which somehow communicates to you in a different way. Phones are used for text and all sorts of things these days. Yeah, no, I know. But if you've got a phone that you're yeah. holding in your hand, or yeah. you've got a phone you on... Don't, the, you don't always hold it in your hand. You don't always phone, see a phone. You know, you've got a mobile mm. phone, it lights up. Mm. You know, I'm, mm. not, I'm talking about a landline, right? Mm-hmm. That's what yeah. I'm talking about. Uh, Scott says this, Tonight has been the most ridiculous collection of stories from Porky in a while. Very funny. Mm. Uh, and here's one from Ashley. It's not supposed to be funny. It says, Porky must be a deaf dog. He likes to hear himself and self-communicates on his own. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Right. Well, communication is, you know, an art. It's a skill. It's yeah. something that, uh, you know, you have to practice. You see what I mean? Yeah. And mm. uh, David says, I don't know if he lives in Malaysia, he says, but in Malaysia, uh, a lot of people keep their dogs on, on, on roof gardens. Mm. Uh, so can't, why can't Porky do the same on his giant roof garden? It's cruel. You shouldn't even put a dog on a lead, let alone confine it into a oh. roof garden. OK. Mm. Right. Anyway, should we go through some listography? and see what we want Have we got a few suggestions? Uh, We have. Excellent. Uh, Matt says this, three inventions you couldn't live without, which is similar to one we've done in the past. No, we've done that. Uh, Three overhyped or disappointing events that you have attended. Mm. Uh, List three times you were right about something before everyone else realised, Mm -hmm. e.g. MG with uh, Claudio Ranieri. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not sure I'd want to boast about that kind of thing. Right. Uh, How about three people who owe you an apology? Mm -hmm. Says Martin. Uh, If you had a time machine, three historical events you would go back to see. Yep. Uh, your three favourite people called Steve mm-hmm. uh, from Saint. Yeah. Uh, the three times as a journalist you wrote a story that wasn't completely accurate but still went to press. Mm-hmm. I don't think we'd have enough, enough no, of those, would you? No. Um, and then uh, it goes. You're certainly back. not going to do the one about people you'd like to clobber or whatever it was. Yes. No, I don't that, want to do that. That would be too personal. I like the one about going back three times you'd like to go back in history. OK. Yeah. Yeah, because we've kind of talked about that. I'm not sure we've ever technically nope. done a, a listography. Exactly. Like All right, so let's do that. That's from mm. Andy. If you had a time machine, three historical events you'd like to go back and see. Yes, that's right. Now, I presume we'd have to put down the marker that you'd have to do it a la um, the Michael J. Fox character in Back to the Future, where you can't interact with anything that went no, on. No, because you can't change you the can't world. Change it. No, so no, no. You'd literally just be an observer. Yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah? Totally okay. agree. All right, so totally that's what agree. we'll do. Brilliant. That is what we'll do. Thank you very yes. much indeed. Mm. Uh, here's one from Belfast Billy. who says, please don't mention Game of Thrones, Porky, uh, which is presumably to do with your uh, yes. Porky vision scenario. Yes, exactly. Um, and uh, let's see, what else have we got here? Mm-hmm. Uh, one from uh, Richard, who's has done rather an amusing picture of a, of a dog that he thinks is deaf. Mm. Um, here's one from uh, William, who says, uh, will they train the dog to learn sign language? It's a good question. Uh, I, I think they already have, haven't they? I think you indicate to your dog what you're doing through yeah. sign language. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Uh-huh. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, OK. Yes. All right. yes. Um, and Norman mm-hmm. says this, I can't believe Porky gets paid for the drivel he just came out with. What? However, it is a great show. Mm-hmm. Thank you mm-hmm. very much indeed. Uh, Michael says, can't get the image of my head out of the parrot mm. and a pigeon on Porky's shoulder guiding him through life's big decisions. Um, well, um, I told you, didn't I, the other night, pigs now have um, been discovered to have a north-south uh, um, 
compass type arrangement in their brain. North South yeah. compass type yeah, arrangement. They have, yeah, honestly. What do you mean, a sense of direction? Sense of direction, yeah, definitely. Well, you said that earlier, didn't you? Yeah, well, I didn't say it earlier because I was talking to you about other things right. about pigs, about the Moin King. But oh, right. but it did occur to me because I was reading this uh, this uh, glossary of uh, pig behaviour, oh, right. and they do have a glossary uh, of pig behaviour. Yeah, yeah, seriously, they do, they do have a, uh, a North South type of uh, arrangement in yeah. their head. Uh, Henny says, how do the deaf people hear the deaf dog barking? Well, they don't, do they? Well, I don't know. You're you know, let's come up with all this. No, 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 no. People are so many, uh, you know, sort of... Um, well, sensible questions, no, I would say. No, not sensible questions, sort of uh, ponderous questions. Hey, by the way, view. I've yeah. got an update for you. Yeah. Because, um, you know, you and I have been talking uh, for a while about various things that we deal with on a regular basis. Yes. Tire problems. Yes, car yes. Car problems. Yes, sure. And all that. You know, I've been mm. having a lighting problem. No. Yeah, I've told you about this. That, you know, months and months ago, yeah. I told you that I went down to B and Q's. We've said it before, so we might as well say it again. Yeah. Uh, because I've got these re- re- recessive uh, spotlights in yes, my Yes, yes, yeah, I know what they are. And in my kitchen, right? Yeah. But because of the EU new rules and the new bulbs. Well, we're we on being it soon, so it won't matter. Well, I'm not sure if that's going to change mm. the size of the bulbs. Mm. But one of the problems I've had is that the bulbs that they sell, which are new, yes. which are supposed to go into these spaces, yeah. do not make contact with the actual, uh, you know, so the source of the electricity. I see. Because you said to me the mm. best thing I should do mm. uh, was to basically put some tin foil that's on right, it. That's right, yeah, to, to uh, conduct No, it. I didn't do yeah. that because that sounded a bit dangerous right. because you're basically talking about setting a fire yeah. in your ceiling, yeah, well, which is a very could stupid be. idea. Could be. Now, I spoke to you know lighting engineers, spoke to lighting mm. shops. They said yes. you could get an adapter of some yeah. kind which makes it work. Amazingly, right, and this is the power of this show and the power of Twitter, a guy called Matt, I'm not going to give his last name out because mm. he, he, he hasn't asked me if I mm. can, he doesn't give me permission to do that, works in the lighting business, this morning, I walked out of here, yeah. uh, and I was provided with a large box of bulbs. Right, right. Took yeah. them home, and there's all kinds of different bulbs in there. It was like a potpourri, Aladdin's cave of bulbs. Right, and I found one that works. Wow! So I now solve the problem. Solve the problem. So Matt Where did the bulbs come from? A massive you know? big hello. Well, from the people that he works with, I think. Yeah, but are you sure you couldn't just go on a B and Q and no. find the same bulb? No, because I found the same bulb, but the same bulb that they sell in B and Q doesn't fit. Mm. So what I've now got is a different bulb, which I now know is a different sort of number. Mm. It's got a different, uh, you know, number on it instead of whatever it was. It's, a, you know, it's yeah. a, something 800. All sounds very odd to me. Well, no, but it's mm. it's it's a common problem. Yeah, okay. It's a common problem. Anyway, okay. I just want to thank him um, yes. for uh, for being able to do that for yeah. me. Uh, Absolutely. All he wants in return is a signed T-shirt from the two of us. Oh, really? So I'm going to ask you to sign a T-shirt. OK. Uh, and we'll send it off to him. And, OK, you're going to pay the £10 for it, are you? We'll send it off from our uh, warehouse where the T-shirts go from. Oh, really? Um, Why not? Well, you're not going to... Well, who who uh, who replaced that T-shirt, then? Who's what do you going... mean? Well, he's... The well, you're saying I have to buy the T-shirt to give him? Well, I think you should, yeah. Really? What, what, what else do you... What other method of uh, uh, are we going to use? Well, you send it out as you would do any other T-shirt. Yeah, but the guy hasn't done me any favours. Well, what, what am I giving well, him a free he's, T-shirt he's for? Done, he's done you a great favour by mm. making my life easier, so oh, no, I no. won't be so ratty with no, you. No, I couldn't care less about that. So you're going to um, be you're going to be but, about it. Uh, right? Well, no, well, I'll tell you I'm, what. Take it off the twenty five quid you owe me from the tennis bet that we had yesterday. And what about the hundred pounds you owe me? That's been taken off the million quid that you owe me. Yeah, don't be daft. Listen, we were talking earlier about um, emotional contagion, weren't we? No. Yes, we were. What's that? Uh, why uh, if somebody starts giggling, you giggle with them. Yeah, but we didn't ever actually explain what it was all about. Right. People undergo brain scans, right, can be observed uh, as to their level of, what did I say it was, emotional contagion. What does that mean? Emotional contagion means that if somebody starts sneezing, you can sneeze. If somebody starts yawning, you can yawn. Yeah. And if somebody literally starts giggling and laughing... Mm. That's the worst possible thing. Yeah. If you're if you're a member of the cabinet, and you're in the cabinet office, and the prime minister says something, you know, which is then cons- misconstrued, yeah. and people laugh. Do you remember on um, Do you remember on uh, the Sky a, a couple of months ago before the end of the, the season? Sky. Yeah, yeah, do you remember Graham Souness and and I think it was Thierry Henry or somebody? Somebody said that he didn't get his leg over properly. Do you remember that? No. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. And mm. uh, and 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 Graham said I started laughing. Then right. and then Jamie Carragher started laughing. I remember when, when Thierry Henry put his hand on Jamie Carragher's knee. Yes. When something shocking happened. That's right. Yeah. And that became a big meme, didn't it? Yeah, but that that what, that wasn't emotional contagion. This this is when somebody starts laughing, everybody else could you see? Because yeah. what happens is emotional contagion in yeah. the workplace. Um, 
has been found to be people who catch colleagues' feelings with a ripple effect, uh -huh. spreading out from a manager's emotional state and attitudes, OK? Right. Now, it says that, and I suppose this makes sense, because you've, uh, you've had children who've grown up through their teenage years. I have, yeah. Um, teenagers are thought to be particularly susceptible to their peers' emotions. Yes. Where they're getting the giggles, having fainting fits, competing academically, mm. or developing eating disorders. So it could be good or bad, this thing, is what could you're saying. It could be good or bad, so emotional just, contagion. So it's not just about giggling, in other words. Well, giggling is the one that they focused on, because that's the one that is most contagious. Yeah, well, there's a bit of a difference between give, yeah. giggling and yeah. laughing along with someone, and yeah. then suddenly developing an eating disorder, isn't it? Or fainting. I don't know why or you fainting. faint all the time. Do you remember um, the Blackpool sort of pleasure beach? Did you ever go there? Yes, I did, yes. Did you ever go the big there one. in the 70s? Because I, well, my, my went there, I went there one time with my parents. I think it was Easter weekend, yes. Easter, Easter holidays, right? Mm -hmm. And my dad said it was because we didn't have any money. Right. We couldn't go abroad, right? The corn was short. The corn was short, yeah, yes. here was a short corn. Yes. And there used to be, it's a bit like a laughing policeman, there used to be a figure, yeah. um, well, not a figure, but a mannequin, yes. at the start of Blackpool Pleasure Bridge. Right. Uh, they just sat there laughing. Right. And it was like dressed as a king or something yeah. like that. Yeah, And no matter how hard you tried, yeah. if you watched it for a couple of minutes, yeah. you just started laughing. Right. See. There was no two ways about it. Pretty good, that. In those days, in the 70s, mm. we used to go there on sort of nights out. Oh, yeah. And really? Uh, yes. That's quite a long way, isn't it, in those days? Blackpool used to hire a shower bank. And, a uh, a shower bank. A shower bank? Yeah, yeah. Right. That's a shower like, bank? No, a shower bank. Okay. It's a bus, you know, and you get on it. Uh -huh. And uh, we'd go up to Blackpool. I didn't know how to at the end, though. It's a C. It's a French word. Yeah, shower bank. Shower bank. Yeah, with a C at the end. Yeah, the C's silent. No, 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 it's it not. That's no, not, you idiot. It no, it's not, it's not. How anyway. do you pronounce Laurent Blanc? You, pr you pronounce it with the C on the end. Laurent Blanc. OK? Blanc. You agree with that? Yeah, uh, no. Well, in that Laurent case, Blanc. you pronounce his name different to everybody else in the world. OK. Um, so, the, uh, so we get up to Blackpool, right, and then, you know, have a riotous night. I mean, really riotous. Uh -huh. And then... Really, the coach driver stayed until the last person was rounded up and put back on the bus. Well, that was usually about six a.m. Yeah, and uh, and then we come back again in a in a in a state of bladderation. It says here and it's a, a type of horse drawn horse drawn vehicle of early motor or early motor coach. Exactly, usually open topped. Yeah, common in Britain during the early part of the twentieth century. Well, there you go, uh, and well, often pronounced charabang yeah. in colloquial British English. Yeah, well, maybe, but I mean, it's it's been adopted and adapted to mm. more modern transport. That's tell me more about I the rogerisation. Well, the rogerisation used to take place on Blackpool Beach. Because, well, the beach. Yes, yes, yes. Be yeah, be God. Because in those days we didn't have enough money to sort of you know hire bedrooms yeah. and and How hotel old rooms. How going on? Nineteen, twenty. Something like that. Me. Yeah, yeah. It's a yeah. loose existence you used to uh, Well, no, well, I mean... was the groping stories yesterday. Yeah, well, no, this is a very Today northern sort of, sort of behaviour, you know, a you know, bit of sort of... Rolling about on the beach, bit horizontal, bit of, uh, horizontal refreshment. Horizontal refreshment on, uh, on Blackpool Beach. You've got to be careful there, haven't you, because the, the tide, tide wasn't coming well, in. the tide comes in really quick there. Providing it wasn't raining and providing it wasn't too cold. But we used to go in the summer. Really? Yes, yes, yes. Shocking Not stuff. a problem. Coming up next, uh, mm. it's time for Porky Vision. Mm-hmm. TV reviewer, I can reveal yeah. that there are no plans for a new series. Yeah, no, but it wasn't their previous series. Oh, hang on, wait a minute. It says here there might be a new series. <laughs> What's the problem? That music can only signal one thing, of course, and it is that time of the week when Porky Vision is unleashed and Mr Parry, of course, has spent a great deal of time uh, poring over various television shows, yes. uh, various different television reviews, yes. various different sort of parts of the television empire yes. uh, to bring us an up-to-date review of the week. Yes, uh, definitely. it has been very, very much anticipated, yes. very popular. Yeah. Uh, what have you got to uh, start off with? Well, have you been watching Versailles? Uh, well, you know, I kind of started watching right, it, right. but I stopped watching it well, because I think I watched it uh, last night by accident slightly. Yeah. I saw this woman, rather uh, well-endowed woman, emerging from the water. Well, in uh, it, uh, I'm sorry, but the sexually explicit uh, uh, action in that has become unacceptable to family television. Well, to be honest, I, I mean, I it's didn't, uh, I didn't, find, I didn't find it. I didn't find it particularly no, uh, no. arousing. No, no. And no. also, the fact that one of the guys in it mm. had a very, very striking resemblance to the man who cannot be named. Yes. Like, yes. That kind of put me yes, off a bit right, as well. Yes, that's right. Yeah, I've noticed that as well. But, it, but I'm afraid it's gone further than that. And there's been a terrible scene in which a woman is uh, in her boudoir. Boudoir? Um, yeah, yeah. And uh, and her fella comes in. Her fella? Yeah, you know, French aristocrat. Yeah. And he immediately starts... Uh, <laughs> he starts indulging The only reason in, I'm laughing is because of the look on your face. Yes. He starts what does he start indulging in? In very intimate sexual activity right. with the lady concerned. Okay. 
who is... Did he be any more specific? Uh, well, that? at first she is sort of, you know, uh, thrashing around on her sort of rather large bed in ecstasy, you right. know what I mean? OK. And then he speaks, uh-huh. and she realises it is not her number one uh, Roger Eyes apartner. Well, didn't she recognise him? No. Why not? Well, because he came from the bottom of the bed. And, what do you uh, mean? What well, do you mean? Well, she could only see his eyes. She couldn't even see those. Her head, <laughs> her, her, her head was on the pillow, right? And he sort of approached and went under the covers. Oh, I see. You see what I mean? Very cunning, uh, that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And she is, as I say, you know, sort of, you know, bathed in the ecstasy of intimacy. Yes. If you see what I mean. And but she thought it was someone else. If she thought it was her, you know, Blimey. chief rogerising partner, but it wasn't. It was somebody else. Yeah. Who. Um, who then, uh, you know, speaks or something, you know, at last, my darling, you know, something in French, you know what I mean? Like right. that, you know. At last, oh, my darling. Yeah, ma chérie, <laughs> you know, or something like that. And then she goes, ah, you know, and uh, oh, it's you. And then she says... Uh, I said, carry on anyway. No, 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 no. Is she, she not? No, she says, I'm going to tell the king. OK. And uh, and he said, well, so what? You know, the king won't mind. We're all at it round here. Basically, that was what he said. OK. Yeah. So, I'm, after witnessing that, I was rather shocked, I have to say. Yeah, I mean, uh, they, they, uh, they have pushed it, pushed it very close oh, to yeah, the boat. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, have yeah. I not also yeah. read that all mm. the sex scenes that they've used in this show... Yes. Every time they put another sex scene in, yeah. people actually physically turn off. Well, that's what I'm saying. It, uh, it's, I mean, yeah. it's ridiculous, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I mean, you'd yeah, have to yeah, be yeah. slightly yeah, repressed, yeah, yeah. I would have yeah. thought. To yes. get excited by that. Yes. Now, I uh, I have to sort of agree. Now, um, now to contrast that with good taste, right? Yes. So that's a very modern production, isn't yeah. it? Let's go back to an era of television when it was all so innocent. Yes. And I'm talking about The Saint, OK? The Saint. Well, The Saint has just come back. Simon Templar. Simon, Simon Templar, The Saint's just come back. Are you talking back. about the Roger Moore one or the one that Roger came Moore. after that? Roger Moore. Roger Moore. Roger Moore. the other guy? Well, that's quite interesting, because his name was Angus uh, Ogilvy, right? Yeah. And did you know that he was uh, the son of the man who founded um, the uh, advertising agency, Ogilvy and Mather? Ogilvy and Mather. And Mather. Was that Angus Ogilvy or Ian Ogilvy? Uh, Hang on. Wait a minute. Uh, The actor concerned was Ian Ogilvy. Ian Ogilvy, right. Ian Ogilvy. So maybe his dad was Angus. Wait a minute. Let me find out. Uh, Son of Francis Ogilvy. Francis. Francis Ogilvy. Okay. Who helped set up the ad agency? Who's Angus Ogilvy then? Isn't he an MP? No, there's was no, he a, no. Yeah, was there's he an MP or something? Yeah, forget Angus Ogilvy. He doesn't okay. exist. Not in this uh, particular <laughs> TV review. Okay. Um, so Ian Ogilvy was the son of Francis Ogilvy, yeah. who helped set up the ad agency Ogilvy and Mather. Yes. Which, in fact, was the basis of the Don Draper inspiring um, TV series yeah. uh, Mad Men. Yes. Have you okay? seen that? Hey? Have you seen that? Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. Have you? you yeah, like I've seen it? that. Yeah, I like the lady with the, the well endowed lady. I like the lady with the auburn hair. Yeah, and the bouncing bust. Yes, I have to say, you know, <laughs> rather attractive. What's her name? Christine uh, Hendricks. Uh, I don't know. Christina Hendricks. I've I'm never sure. actually watched the show. Yeah. Anyway, um, so 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 Angus so. Angus Ogilvy was the husband of Princess Alexandra of Kent. Yes, that's right. Yeah, nothing mm. to do with Ian Ogilvy. No, um, who was the saint? But anyway, the first saint, Simon Templar. So. Yeah. Now, you see, that's what I call tasteful TV, because Simon Templer is mm. always rescuing a damsel in distress. Yes. I mean, literally always, you know. It's sometimes just a side issue, though, isn't it? Uh, it's usually, yeah, t- it, there's always a, a girl involved. But what is brilliant about Simon Templer is that in the series, he's so famous that he can do things like, you know, in Argentina, he's uh, rescuing a bloke from a pair of kidnappers, yeah. and the chief of the local Buenos Aires police comes right. up, and this is always this. It's a fantastic start always, to the show. He always knows it, right? Well, I was about to say it comes up, and 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 two of the chief uh, of police's men are you know grappling with Simon Templer, right. who has been trying to help a kidnapped victim, right. but they don't understand. Yeah, yeah. So they grabbed him, and all of a sudden the chief says uh, to his two men, you know, oh, let him go. Right. After all, it is not every day. That here in Buenos Aires <laughs> we have the famous Simon Templar. Yeah. And then this music comes on. And then a halo and then, appears. And, match, and also the matchstick man. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and a halo appears. I, I, told you, I used to have a, I used mm. to have a Volvo. Yeah, uh, that's right. You told me. Yeah, yeah. Car, yeah, absolutely. With yeah. the saint on the front, with the matchstick saint on the, sure, on the bottom. Sure, sure, sure. Anyway, point of my story is, point of my story is that uh, there's always a lady involved, right? And he always rescues her and that kind of stuff. But there's never any smutty business in the Saints. Yeah. And that is why I'm comparing it, you know, from 30, 
40 years ago probably, uh, with, uh, with Versailles, which I think has gone too far, which will turn people off, and the sort of stylized. Romance mm. of Simon Tanner. Well, do you remember the old rules they used yeah. to have? Was that in the old, certainly in black and white films yes, in Hollywood? Yes. Um, uh, the mm. man was never mm. allowed to have his feet off the uh, off the floor if there was a bed scene, oh, for example. Uh, and sometimes the woman as well. Very interesting. You know? Okay. And if they kept down, they had to keep their shoes yes, on. Yes. I remember my father telling me this that, yes. you know, way back in the days when you were rolling okay. about on Blackpool Beach. Oh um, yes, it was quite. It, it was, was on quite, refreshment. Uh, yeah, yeah. Women were quite yeah. sort of, um, shall mm. we say, taken aback if they if they had their shoes taken off. I see. Yeah. Was a bit yeah. Of a well, I mean, I'm totally not interested in any of this. No, I am. I see. Yeah. I see. Yes, I know. Well, you don't know this. Well, at I don't all. know why you're telling I'm me because it's not some, part of my TV I'm, review. Well, we only get a very limited amount of time for the TV review. Well, and you're, limited amount and, of time. And, and you're you and get you're to talk for ten minutes. No, no. And you're you're filling the airwaves with a load of nonsense rubbish that nobody cares about. All right. Well, what else you got for us then? I'm telling you. I'm telling you. So, so old time temper. I mean, for instance, now. So that series went away. That series went away, OK. Mm. And then they brought it back, and funny enough, you're absolutely right, with Ian Ogilvy. Yes. Now, the problem was, he was said to be too good-looking. Uh-huh. Now, did you know that he went to Eton? I didn't know that. No, I didn't either. But because his father was We're Francis Ogilvy... we now. Hey? I mean, never mind. What did no. you say? Never mind, no, never mind. Carry on. Yeah, don't interrupt, please. All right. Um, he went to Eton, where he um, defeated Sir Ranulph Fiennes in a boxing match. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah. Right, OK. Um, who's Ranulph Fiennes? Is he the climber or the actor? Which one is he? <laughs> well, you know there's Ray Fiennes, isn't there? Uh, Ranulph Fiennes is the explorer. Oh, he? he's the explorer, is he? OK, yeah. he's, he's the, the man... That- isn't he the one that lost his fingers? He sawed all. He sawed the tops of his fingers yeah. off because yeah. they got frostbite on yeah. Everest or something. That's it. So he sawed them off. Yeah. Um, now then, he wasn't in the saint, though, was he? No, no, he was at Eton with oh. Ian Ogilvy, okay. who who's the saint. The problem is, Ian Ogilvy says that the um, the second series which he made, twenty eight programmes, ruined his acting career. Uh-huh. A, he was too good looking, but B, unlike the first series. He took relationships with women a little bit further. Right. You see what I mean? What do you mean, more Rogerisation? Well, more, more in sort of Rogerisation intense. Okay. If you see what I mean. Oh, you know what I mean? It was a bit more explicit. Yeah. Well, that's, that's because it was a bit more modern, I suppose. Well, I suppose so. But yeah. I mean, that was the ruin of it. And to this day, people still say mm. that the TV classic that we're talking about here was, in fact, Roger Moore yeah. in The Saints. Did they not make a film? Original of it as well? series. No, I never made I a film. I think they made a film of the no, same, didn't No, they didn't, no, no. Pretty sure they did. No, no, they didn't, honestly. I think Val Kilmer was in it. Um, oh, I see what you mean. Yes, yes, a very modern film. Yes, they did, of well, the same. Well, it a modern film. No, well, yeah, they well, did. Well, not a silent film. No, no, no. <laughs> Val, I thought you meant, did they make a film of it in, like, you know, the 70s and no. the 80s? No, they made a film of it, like, about five years ago, right. didn't they? Yeah, it was a flop, though. Nobody wanted to watch ago, it. Yeah. It was no good. Uh, so I, you know that's it. That's, is that uh, it? That's Porky Vision for the week. Oh, absolutely. Tremendous. Yeah, no, Excellent. no, no. I so think... Rogerisation much worse now than it used to be. Yes, uh, back in the old days. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, uh, yeah. Time. And we shouldn't stand for it. Shouldn't watch it. Okay. In my view. Excellent. Okay. That was Porky Vision. Yeah. Uh, another one, same. Uh, this time next week. Indeed. Of course, uh, we've got uh, the Porky Quiz tomorrow night yeah. uh, on Welsh pop stars. Uh, loads more of your texts coming next. Yeah. I'll get a chance to go home. Sport, we are of the two mites. Trevor says this, check out this very informative site. The Hearing Dog Centre is located at Saunderton well, uh, Bucks go. in England. It's hearingdogs.org.uk. Yeah, uh, We should certainly check that out. Uh, uh, Becky says this, classic Porky Vision, central Rogerisation in a French boudoir yeah. by an unknown assailant. Yes. Hashtag not a family show. Yes, mm. yes, yes, that's right. Yeah. Uh, it says here, uh, Porky's being a scumbag. <laughs> oh, that's nice, isn't it? Just <laughs> sign the damn shirt for yeah, MG true, and stop worrying about the £10. Yeah, it is. It is true. Mm. It's absolutely shocking that you do what that. What a Scrooge, do. says yeah. Stephen. That, that is shocking, yeah. That first one came from uh, somebody called Timor. Timor? Timor. Really? Mm. Uh, here's one from Roy. He says, what did he actually say and what the hell was he talking about and will it be on PBS over here? Uh, Porky Vision, hashtag baffled. Yeah, baffled about what? Uh, I think your Porky Vision scenario. Oh, how can you be baffled? Yeah. No, I'm not sure they knew what you were talking about. Mm-hmm. Mm. So, um, coming up this weekend... 
Um, actually, it's not this weekend yet, is it? But I've got the feeling in the back of my head that it's this weekend. Yes. Because uh, the Euros return tomorrow. Yes. Portugal against, against Poland. Mm-hmm. Right. Would you care to offer or proffer a uh, prediction for that? You see, another one here says near perfect pitch. What? And I'm sorry, I've just got to finish this. It says, uh, call, accusing me of being very tight. Uh, you don't have to pay for the shirt. MG wants to give it to somebody who's done him a favour. Doesn't your empire have a marketing and promotions budget? Yeah, it's a good point. Though. Well, we'll have to get one. Now, I'm sorry, what was the question? My question was, yes. and I can't believe you can't hear me. I'm sitting literally three feet yeah, yeah, from yeah, you. Yeah, go on, yeah. And I said, the Euros are back tomorrow. Indeed. Right. We've got four quarterfinals. Yes. We've got Portugal against Poland first. Yes. Uh, followed by Wales against Belgium. Indeed. Followed by Germany against Italy. Yeah. And then followed by uh, France against Iceland. Yeah. The game that England should have been in. Yeah. Uh, will you be uh, boning up on that before watching the game? Will you be watch- Where will you be watching the game? The only reason I say this is because mm. I've got to go uh, shooting off down to Sussex this morning. Yes. Because uh, my, my son is involved in a piano. Oh, that's uh, good. A uh, concert. Very nice. And I don't know how long uh, he's going to be in it mm-hmm. for, but, uh, you know, I've got to go there and watch it. Yeah, well, of course you have. Well, is obviously, but I've got, to, I've, but I've got to. I've got to sort my day out in such a way that I managed to get back to London mm. in time to watch the football. Well, it's, uh, and also something we'll be talking they, about tomorrow night, and obviously. also before they shut the road because they've started shutting roads again. You know, after eight o'clock at night, they started shutting roads. What night's the Wales game? Friday. Friday night. Yeah, that's. So good. You don't have to worry about that. Yeah, because we're not on that night. Well, you want to watch it though, obviously. Well, of course you want to yeah, watch yeah, it, yeah, but I mean, yeah. it's not so much of a pressure point if okay. you don't have to come into work, is it? I thought we were supposed to be doing listography here. Yeah, we are. Yes. Well, do you want to do that, then? Well, I don't know why you're rambling on about well, uh, a game you, of football well, tomorrow I'm night. I'm asking you about what you're doing later on. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll be watching the game, okay. obviously. All right. Yeah. Well, tell us about the three things you would take a time machine back to. Well, why don't we do one at a time each? All right, well, you do your first one. Right, my you? first one would be I would go back to the day of the Battle of Britain. I would be a Spitfire pilot fighting the Germans. Yeah. Without a shadow of a doubt. It would be well, my proudest take, moment. No, you can't take part. You can only... You can only no, uh, I would. No, I would. You, no, you can't. No. I would. I wouldn't change history, but no, I, no, of I would. You would. I would drive down no, to you could, though. an airfield in Kent. No, you can't change. And history. I would walk on, and I would put on a, a uniform, and uh, shout tally ho, and jump into the cockpit of a Spitfire. Well, you see, you would be then altering history. I wouldn't be altering history. There were lo- loads of Spitfire pilots around in those days, and in fact, yeah, um, but since you're not one of them, yeah. everything that you would then do, yeah. would have an effect on everybody. Well, else. I would try and get involved. You just have to look at it from the side. I'm trying to get involved. I'm gonna, I've got a great one here, yep. and you are going to absolutely be gobsmacked by this. Right. I'd like to go back and watch the Big Bang. That's impossible. How is it impossible? Nobody wist- witnessed it. Nobody well, witnessed it. What do you mean? So, Because no, nobody witnessed it, it didn't happen? Nobody witnessed it. So what? So you can't go back and watch the Big Bang. It's like, it's like saying, oh, I want to go back and watch the wind blowing. You can't see the Big Bang. Why not? You, even if you were there, because it, because it happened millions of miles away in space, yeah. so why millions of it? years, even before wherever you are, it came into your vision. It's, yeah. impo- it's impossible to yeah. watch the Big Bang. On the Bang. other hand, you could go back uh, to the Battle of Britain mm. Mm. and pretend you're a Spitfire pilot yeah. and go up in the air in an imaginary plane yes. and not have any effect on the rest of the uh, uh, the curvature of well, time. I'd go up in a real plane. It's just that, look, in the records of Spitfire pilots, don't you think <laughs> quite a few of them just disappeared without trace and yes. they don't know how, what happened to them and That's all right. that kind of stuff? Yeah. I'd, be, I'd have been one of yeah. those. So why can't I go back and watch the Big Bang? Because you can't see the Big Bang. Why not? Nobody's ever seen the Big Bang. Well, it doesn't it, matter. It was a cosmic phenomenon. Well, you say the, the fact the, that you can't see it means you can't actually go back and imagine that it happened. No, I don't think you can because it was a cosmic ph- phenomenon yeah. which we only know about through the the scientific research of particles. You don't believe it. Well, scientists say it happened, but you, you know don't, you don't believe in it. Do you? Scientific you think part- it didn't happen. That's why scientific particles floating around in space that we've managed to pick up on since. What's a scientific particle? Scientific particle is a bit of dust that came from something which they've looked at and mm. said, "Wow, that's part of the Big Bang." So somebody has seen it. Nobody's ever seen it. Nobody's ever seen well, it. Well, that's what I want to go. That's my first one. Well, I, you know, I think that's so crazy. The beginning of time. It. Right, my second one. Yeah, go on. I would love to be, love, 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 love to be on the battlefield at... Uh, Another battle. Sorry? Do you, do you crave being a hero or something? Well, no, I want to see these things happen. I want to see the development of Britain. I'd love to have been on the battlefield at Agincourt and seen our... Agincourt? Our, our, yeah, our archers with the longbows, the longbow oh, men of England... You don't England, want to be an archer. ...literally giving the V-sign to the French after they'd mm. routed them in the field. Do you not want to be an archer? Yeah, I'd be an archer, yeah. Be yeah. an archer, yeah, Even definitely. you've been told you can't get involved. Yeah, I'd be an archer. All right. Yeah. I'd like to, secondly, uh, mm. go back to uh, the time when the uh, meteor hit the dinosaurs on Earth. Well, you see, you'd die then. Why? You'd be wiped out. No, I'm in a time machine. 
Well, no. Um, you see, again... Well, everything wasn't wiped out. How do you know you'd be in the right spot on Earth for the meteor to hit? Well, because I do my research. Yeah, yeah, well... Well, as, as considering that we spoke to a guy on the show tonight who doesn't even know if there was a meter well, and certainly doesn't know where well, it hit, well, you said, then, then you, you, well, said you wouldn't know where to go well, back to. Well, it's, well, an, you, it's another ridiculous well, you assumption. Said, you said everybody knew that one. No, 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 no. Right, I everybody your, knew the theory. They don't know where it happened. Right, what's your third battle? Uh, no, 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 no. My third one wouldn't be a battle. My, my third one would be um, sitting in, sitting in on the. Do you know, in Scotland, that's the same as uh, uh, eating in. You know, when you, they say you're taking it away, you're sitting in. That's yeah. The thing they say in Glasgow. Well, the thing I could never get used to in America was the carry out. Because the carry out in this country is, uh, well, that's what they say is in food. Scotland. They say in Scotland. But in, in, you know, in America, it's, uh, it's uh, booze. The carry out's the booze, isn't is it? it? Yeah, of course it is. I don't, I've never heard you that. You know, from the drugs, well, from ne- the uh, liquor store. I've never taken a carry out. Got to carry me. out from a liquor store. Yeah. Um, no, my third one. It's all about drink with you, isn't it? Uh, some of it is. Some of it is, yes, definitely. Uh, third one would be uh, um, I would be on the deck of. Um, <laughs> what's your problem? This is going to be some other military thing, isn't it? Yes, I'd be on the deck of Victorious <laughs> with Admiral Lord <laughs> Nelson. Why have you got Horatio such a? Why have, Admiral you, Lord why, Nelson. why have you got such a kind of uh, const, you know a constant need to be in the kind of military? Because I because would you then could never really be in it. No, I'd see the development of the British Empire, you know, um, and the and they develop and the and the shaping of a nation. Uh-huh. I mean, can you think of anything more exciting than being on the deck of the uh, victory alongside Horatio Admiral Lord Nelson yeah, as I as, can actually. as his boat was yeah. engaging? I can think of a lot of things more exciting in the first than that. battle with the French and Spanish warships. Yeah, It'd be think, amazing. I can think of a lot of things more exciting. Yeah. Than that. Yeah, well, I can't. Really? I can't, no. I Tragic, can't think of anything that. more exciting. Tragic. Right, what do you want to be? I can't believe you didn't say you wanted to be inside of a Beatles recording studio or something like that. No, or no. you want to be as a sort of playtime soldier. No, 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 not at all. Not my at all. fourth go one on. yeah. uh, is I'd like to go back to whatever year it was. Is this third or fourth? This is my third. You said fourth. Did I? You just said my fourth one, yeah. But anyway, your I third one. I don't think one. so. You did, yeah. OK. Well, right. I made a mistake. Yes, you I'm did happy make to a admit mistake, when yeah. I make a mistake, okay. unlike you. OK. This is my third one, Yes. for the avoidance of doubt. I'd like to go back to uh, a time when you were a, a pupil at the King's School, Chester. Oh, yes. Because I'd, That's like interesting. To, uh, I'd like to keep an eye on what you actually did there yeah. to see whether anything you've ever said mm. uh, in the years since then uh, has been anything other than a complete and utter falsehood. No, no, no. And no. what I'd like to do is make sure that all of these stories you tell about being the great cricketer, yeah. the great tennis player, the great yeah. footballer, yes. you know, all of these yes. things are actually true. Well, hang on. That's you, what I do. You, uh, d- thanks to a very dedicated um, listener to this show, mm. who supplied us with two King School Chester yearbooks, you've actually seen the evidence of the fact that, A, I was a star football player. You were certainly in the football team, and you got a mention, yes? Yes, and mention... There was a... no mention of cricket, there was no mention of tennis, well, there was no mention of rugby, well, hang on, there was no mention on. of anything else. Hang on, hang on. In the term when you play football, you don't yeah. play cricket or tennis, because oh. that's a summer term, oh, okay. and this was a winter term, oh. and therefore it would not have been included. Yeah, right. So I can tell you for sure, you know, that the evidence you saw was very typical of my contribution yeah. to school life. Well, like I say, I'd like to see it for myself, and the only way to do that yeah. would be to take the time machine back oh. uh, and observe you uh, with a very forensic eye. The reason I wouldn't like to have been in a Beatles recording studio, right, which is a good suggestion from you, considering that you know, I do uh, have a... a bi- interest in the yeah. Beatles is because the frustration of not being able to join in because I have no musical talent would just be too much. <laughs> well, It'd just be too much. You just observe it though. No, I I, I couldn't because I'd think, God, what an opportunity I yeah, missed. But what a brilliant not thing to, to being see. one of the great people. You yeah, know, but no, yeah. but you're not one of the great people. You might as well accept it. Oh, that's what I mean. Just watch that's the other I mean. great yeah. people yeah. enjoy yeah, yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Well, be it. I think it's a good. Um, I think it's it's a good. Uh, Suggestion, actually. I think and it is. I just think that I would have been so frustrated thinking, golly, that should have been me and it wasn't. You know what I mean? Yeah, but you see, that's, that's the problem. you go through your life regretting everything. No, I don't. I, I, je, ne, re, ne, je ne regrette rien. OK. OK? Thank you. Yeah. This is Talk Sport. Fantastic song to end the show on, eh? Who's that? 
Who is it? Is it Edith Piaf? It is Edith Piaf. Oh, well, it might be. Correct of window. Uh, there you go. Now, how's this from William? He says, the impact crater which wiped out the dinosaurs was at the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico. That's what is believed to be the case. Yeah. Well, you obviously wouldn't want to be anywhere near that. Uh, well, why, isn't there any, why isn't there any scientific evidence of, There's you a know, massive crater. Yeah, uh, and there should be loads of sort of, uh, you know, lunar dust uh, lying around. Well, there was. I mean, that was why they all died out, because it was literally like a sort of nuclear winter. Yeah, I know, but what but I'm saying every, is... Not everything died. What I'm saying is... Is that the scientists now should be able to dig up the surrounding area and say, "Look, here it is. This is this all came from outer space," and they haven't, and they've well, never said no, that. They absolutely have. They haven't. Belfast Billy. Well, you should have asked the dinosaur man. Yeah, well, I did ask him, and no, I you said, didn't. "You know, there's no you real said evidence." We knew, no, you said we know everything that we need to know, so there's no yeah. point in asking any more questions. Exactly. And you missed an opportunity. Belfast yeah. Billy says, "Porky the plank. What a waste of a time machine." What? Uh, which is quite good. Why? Uh, here's one from uh, mm. David. He says, "Sounds like you can watch the Big Bang on Versailles each yeah. night. Yeah. Uh, very possibly." Yes. Uh, oh, that's, uh, and uh, Peter true. says, view the Big Bang, where would you sit? Uh, to which I've answered on Twitter, in the big chair, yeah. obviously. Yeah. Uh, and Roy says, if Porky got involved in the Battle of Britain, we'd all be speaking German now. Uh, that's very nice, isn't it? Yeah, isn't no, you good? wouldn't. Don't worry about that. Uh, I don't think he's worried about it. Uh, and Bill says, I used to think that you chaps indulge in mindless wittering. Yeah. I mean, listen to your show, I no longer think this. Oh. I think he's trying to say that we, we mindlessly witter. No, is he saying he used to think it was mindless Twitter, but he's now changed his mind, no, so it's now, what, no, what it's now think, meaningful. No, I think what he's meaning is that he doesn't think it anymore, he knows it. I oh, I see, I see. OK, well, that's great, mate. You, in my view, he's one of those chaps that, um, if you're a fool, uh, just keep your mouth shut, yes. don't open your mouth and let everybody find the evidence of your fool, Very Tom well. Fulry. Don't forget to come back tomorrow for another sparkling, as fizzy as a bottle of champagne, podcast from the two mics. Kissing a man without a beard is like eating your chips without salt and vinegar. If you love the two mics podcast, you'll love the live show. Weekday overnights from 1am on DAB Digital Radio and 1089 and 1053 AM and via the TalkSport app. TalkSport, your Premier League station with exclusive commentaries every weekend. What an absolute corker. TalkSport. Sure, uh, share, 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 share. Started, sure. started. It stands Dutch again. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. This guy, you see, now this guy will be sort of uh, barracked. Uh, do I mean barracked? I mean barracked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, barracked. <laughs>